powerful song, powerful song. This can't be it. Go ahead and pray in the spirit in one minute. This can't be it. God is so much, so much bigger. What we've heard so far cannot be all of it. Can you pray and tell him, visit me tonight. Visit me in a mighty way. Go ahead and pray. You're still praying. Say, Lord, this can't be it. You are so much bigger than this. Hallelujah. Every time, every time you are conscious of the fact that what you see is not all there is in God. Can you tell somebody there is more? There is more. But, but you see, that more is for those who can press. That more is for those who can press. I'd like you to pray in one minute and say, Lord, I came with a hunger tonight. Please make sure you are praying. I came with a hunger tonight. I came with a hunger tonight. She My heart, my mind, my soul belongs to you. My love, it all belongs to you. It all belongs to you. Belongs to you. This is not a special number tonight. Let it be a communication from the depths of your spirit. Hey, it belongs to you. And we all sing it one more time again. My heart. My heart. My mind. My soul. My love. My life. My life. My life. My life. My life. My life. it belongs to you our hearts and everything we do tonight in this place belongs to you are you ready to sing now the songs that we sing the song we sing it all belongs to that we breathe
Lord, you have my heart. Tell him it belongs to you. It belongs to you. Belongs to you. Lord, in a time where many things clamor for our hearts, I'm declaring tonight that my heart belongs to you. Belongs to you. It belongs to you. Belongs to you. Belongs to you. It belongs to you. Belongs to you. Belongs to you. It belongs to you. Yeah. Belongs to you. Belongs to you. Make sure you're just talking to the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Listen, I love it when we sing songs that declare how helpless we are in the face of His Majesty. These are deep spiritual songs. The Bible says, He that cometh unto God must believe that He is. If you do not believe that He is, then you will not experience His dimension. As a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Greet 20 people. Just give them a big hug. And return back to your seat. God bless you. You raise me up so I can stand on mountain. You raise me up to walk on stormy sea. And I am strong. Please be seated. God bless you. We have a lot to do this night. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.
I saw my younger brother in this place. Celebrate him. Come on, wave your hands. <laughs> Hallelujah. Welcome, sir. Praise the Lord. Now, tonight is a very serious night. Say it's a very serious night. So just laugh with your neighbor for the last time and let me have your full attention for the rest of this night. Yeah, I mean it. Say neighbor, if I don't laugh with you again, don't be sad. It's just the nature of the night. <laughs> you better laugh. Stretch it now while it lasts. Hallelujah. What is it with this insect in Jesus' name? Hallelujah. Ta-da-da. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now we've been we've been discussing a series on family life. Those outside, can you hear me? Say praise the Lord. God bless you. Hallelujah. Please, everyone, follow tonight. I prayed and I prayed and I said, God, do something remarkable in this place. Hallelujah. Look up, please. There are seven mountains. Remember our series on the kingdom. There are seven mountains that I believe that God is raising and anointing the body of Christ to occupy, to take over, and to legislate on behalf of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Mountain number one is the business and economic world. God wants men to conquer that mountain. Mountain number two, politics and governance. God is seeking for men who have an understanding of the spirit. Men after the order of Daniel who can legislate on behalf of territories and speak the counsel of God in our social environment. Mountain number three, family life. Family life is becoming a mess. Every arm robber was born by a woman, true or false. Every thief and tout that is threatening the society was born by a woman. So it's important that the life and the glory of God be taken to that, that area. Hallelujah. Mountain number four, education. Education. The value system of the kingdom must be taken. Education is so important because that is the principle of sustainability when you educate people you mentor them you train them you build them it brings about continuity hallelujah what's mountain number five the arts and entertainment arts and entertainment very very important we have a lot of musicians we have a lot of footballers movie actors celebrities who can influence an entire territory just with one movie one song one rap and so on and so forth so we need to take god and his value systems there mountain number what now six the media any man can buy airtime and say anything whether for or against God. We've had people speak against God directly. What's the last mountain? Huh? How can it be sports? Religion. A mountain of religion. We have several kinds of religions and all of their leaders and founders have a say and they have an influence over people. So we need to invade that mountain. Let's review the mountains very quickly again. Number one, 
business we we are tired of poor and broke churches poor and broke christians poor and broke people hallelujah we are tired of unbelievers controlling the wealth and the finances and allowing a few people to just scrounge for resources it's not of god it's devilish more sinners will go to hell as a result of poverty than lack of preachers hallelujah second mountain sorry politics and governance someone can sit down and legislate that land should not be sold for church building again is that true no matter how anointed you are you will suffer from that legislation recently the gay movement was tested a bit in our senate i thank god because there is a level of decorum we have hallelujah our national assembly has not derailed from the value of the kingdom that much and so they just kicked it out at once there are countries today that they have passed certain bills into law and they did not call any preacher or pastoral association for their consultation so two people can decide to get married listen carefully a man and a man and they can choose the church they want to join them and as a pastor if you don't join them they will withdraw your license sue you lock up your church pack up everything hallelujah this is very disastrous so we need men who have the fear of god men who understand the values of the kingdom to invade our government hallelujah the ten commandments is not kicked out by herbalists it's kicked out by parliament people people who sit down and legislate on behalf of the kingdom we can keep praying in tongues and throwing ourselves up and down but so long as there are people who are legislating things that are not consistent with the will of god it's terrible in china you cannot have more than a child now one is okay praise god it's terrible they carry out free abortions before they pay women's salary if by any reason whether knowingly or knowingly your husband gets you pregnant you are in for it what did i say whether knowingly or knowingly that's none of their business you have one child that's enough because they are trying to control whatever they want to control it's terrible so we need people there number three family life how many of you agree with me that family life is in a mess right now it needs a reordering hallelujah the boundaries that have been kept have been taken away we do not even know where the boundaries are again and this is why this series is important but let's just review the other mountains you can get all of this in our teachings on the kingdom the fourth mountain education very important for as long as we keep teaching people you know i told you one of our dreams is by the time god gives us an opportunity we are going to build a school a world-class school i've shared it with the leaders we will build a school and there are three courses we are going to add to the curriculum one is called spiritual growth financial education and koinonia these are three courses that our students must offer hallelujah for you to write why they say you must pass mass and english for us you must pass mass english financial education and spiritual growth yeah we keep raising intellectuals who have no fear and no knowledge of god and their knowledge makes them fools the bible says there were two trees in the garden one the tree of life the other the tree that brings the knowledge of both good and evil hallelujah the fifth mountain arts and entertainment very important hallelujah some of you are gifted and skilled fashion designers beauticians and so on and so forth we need people to carry the value system we don't want the world teaching us how to dress coming with every kind of junk and everything we don't want the world controlling us let the best footballers be tongue-talking christians let the best golfers be tongue-talking christians who can say no to every jezebel that wants to come and throw down their destiny hallelujah we need to take the value system of the kingdom mountain number six the media i look forward to times when 
we will not just own see i truly believe that during our time owning a television station will be like owning a handset hallelujah we are talking about set lights we are not talking about television stations hallelujah owning set lights and we pay for the bill for decades ahead of time we can do anything we want to do nobody comes to tell us what to put on air or what to take out of air how to culture and edit our words when you are listening to christian programs and someone says a vulgar word they have ways of canceling it there are other programs that when you are mentioning the things of god they cancel it the same way that is nonsense can't stand begging the government for permission and airtime and they give us five minutes and ten minutes if we want to worship for the whole day let's have it thank god for the ministries that have television stations it's a breath of fresh air in this wild jungle of babylon where everything can just be posted online hallelujah then the last mountain is the mountain of religion religion has caused more harm to the body it's all kinds of things we need men who will rise up this is where you talk about the fivefold authentic christianity and i'm glad to announce to you that nigeria will present the true portrait of apostolic christianity to the world yeah this is true hallelujah the mantle left uk in the days of smith wigglesworth and went down to america and they merchandised it by their intercourse with babylon and it left to asia and now it's returned to africa we will show the world the true portrait of what true apostolic christianity is if you believe that say amen, amen. so today we're going to consider one of the mountains family life pastor jake started it how many of you were blessed celebrate him may god cause men to celebrate you just the way you did selfish people hallelujah don't worry i'm just joking you're not selfish people you're spirit-filled champions and generals on your way to tear down the walls of evil hallelujah so now please understand this we are going to be very comprehensive in this series we're not just talking about for many people when they just talk about um relationship the circumference of our dealing is just a guy a lady how they should get into a relationship and they stop there uh -uh. the journey starts from knowing yourself down till fatherhood raising children and that's why it's called family life it's not called relationship series right family life so it's a journey praise the lord i want you to listen because the lord told me he will answer a lot of questions tonight and i know a few people i hope they are here i told them to be here who sent me a lot of questions you know about several confusions that they've had along this area and i told them look just come for the program god bless you pastor jake started by talking about a godly relationship and we want to bring believers into an understanding of the biblical principles that govern godly relationships and family life everybody say after me i'm a christian that means i'm a child of god that means i'm not of the world that means i have the value system of the kingdom yeah that's true you have the value system of the kingdom you are not of the world you cannot afford to do things the way people are just doing it and it's very sad please look up it's very sad over 90 percent of us in this place have learned everything we learned about relationship and family life either from media or our friends or our bitter experiences hallelujah there are few ministries that pay the price to talk about family life and the principles of godly relationships and you see what you don't teach people when you don't teach people certain principles they learn just anything that comes is that correct there are pastors that castigate and condemn people and get angry at their members because they don't seem to be excelling in this area but then they will not teach the truth the bible says faith comes by hearing when when adam said 
the lord the bible says in in genesis 3 it says and he heard the voice of god walking in the cool of the day and he said adam where art thou adam said i heard your voice but i hid why because i was naked and god said who told you in other words that's an information you got from somewhere so everything you have today that constitutes your mindset was told you by somebody the bible says paul speaking he says there are as it were many voices in the earth and none of them are without effect so we're going to be considering a lot of things this is a very life transforming series and i want you to pay your rapt attention hallelujah there are many people who were taught nothing about love nothing about relationship nothing about sex nothing about marriage nothing about the dignity of keeping yourself they just our parents just hoped that we will find the truth hallelujah that has resulted to bitter casualty in the lives of many people but tonight the lord brings light in the name of jesus very important and the church that is supposed to be an apostolic molding place the potter's house where men are built and fashioned they've either shied away from it and are not ready to take responsibility in that area and teach and train the people because we have this demonic teaching that these kinds of teaching should not be taught in church we have this religious spirit is that true there are churches that would dare not talk about things like this they feel all that there is in the life of someone is just teach people how to be built spiritually how to pray in tongues how to love god but those people who enter a relationship is that true while they are praying the guy sees the lady and likes her now he doesn't know how to manage what is happening to him or the guy wants to get married and all he has been taught to do is pray in tongues and see visions in the realm of the spirit and fall under the anointing and he does not know how to help himself there are many anointed children in the body of christ we are only sophisticated when it comes to spiritual things but when it comes to the wisdom of living in our social environment many christians are dull of understanding is that true many christians live like fools in their social environment because we lack the wisdom so you see an unbeliever who does not know god doesn't respect the ways of god but has a lot of wisdom when it comes to living in life wisdom for life many church folks lack this hallelujah that's why you can see for instance unbelieving ladies you never see a guy who just gets up like that and comes to them but every time you want to see nonsense that happens is christian girls any man that feels is emotionally troubled and he just wants to sleep around with any lady they know how to find christian girls hallelujah and that's not because the christian girls are bad that's because we the preachers who should build and help them and teach them the truth are being irresponsible all of us let me tell you something never pray for a crowd or for membership if you cannot teach and train the people are you listening to me you have no business having people in your congregation if you are not ready to build them praise the lord and by the grace of god it's our goal to build people holistically so sometimes you see us teach on character and it looks as if that is all there is in god then we teach about the principles of the spirit and the anointing we teach on finance we teach on purpose the kingdom destiny it's important to touch on every aspect so that we will have believers that are built and fashioned if you believe that say amen, amen. right so um pastor jake started with the basics of relationship please let's run through it i have a lot to cover tonight and i trust god for grace in jesus name hallelujah the first thing pastor jake started telling us and everybody i want you to look up inside and outside listen to me lift your hands everybody say i receive the spirit of meekness say one more time i receive the spirit of meekness i humble myself to hear to understand to receive and to learn pride is a is a killer 
there are many people who because of pride and arrogance will not listen many people will believe they know what they are doing just listen hallelujah praise the lord the first thing we need to define is the concept of love pastor jake said that very extensively i will run through it one of the biggest challenges please let me have one guy and one lady here quickly one here one here anybody taiwo quickly please appreciate them hallelujah now listen i want you to know that a man is not another woman every lady say that a man is not another woman ladies say a woman is not another man very important the concept of love from the perspective of a man is far different from love what love is for a woman are you following me now the bible says that when god brought man into being all that was man's focus was purpose destiny are you following me now and honor and authority man was conscious of his place the honor the authority and everything god has given him and so very quickly i want to go very straight to the point every time you talk of love from a man's perspective it means two things number one honor number two respect everybody say love for a man means number one number two no matter how you claim or think you are loving a man if that concept of love does not translate to genuine honor or respect you have not loved the man by his definition are you following me now very important ladies understand this when it comes to dealing with a man men can kill because of respect are you listening to me men can kill you call somebody mister when you should call him chief he can sue you he can make sure you die for that statement is that true men can kill you call somebody a pastor who you should call a reverend or a reverend who you should call a bishop or a brother who you should call an apostle or prophet or whatever he can kill you for it sister your beauty can fade at once like a leaf if you disrespect a brother are you listening to me oh it's it's not about ego ladies think it's ego is is our configuration by design you will never get the best of a man if you do not understand what love means from the perspective of the man so what does love mean sisters honor and respect what does it mean to honor to hold in high esteem to hold in high esteem as we explore this you will know the reason why some relationships will never work and some homes will never come together it doesn't matter what kind of message is preached it's not just about satan and demons let's get the fundamental thing straight so love means respect and honor when you respect the guy you respect his assignment you respect his call you respect his purpose that's the circumference of what love means for a guy very important it was on account listen to me ladies never forget this never forget this your primary ministry or a fixed ministry that god has put for every lady is to be a help meet for the man so it doesn't matter what crusades you have to do in the future it was the first mention of a woman was to be able to help the man in his assignment is that true the bible says and god said it is not good for the man i have created and given an assignment to be alone it is not good he said and i will make a help meet a help suitable ladies say i'm a help suitable say it with confidence i'm a help suitable because there are some of you that have gone through things in life that have abused this statement you feel that you are not a help to somebody we'll talk about that you are a help suitable and the bible says her desire shall be to her husband her desire shall be to her husband so when you love the man 
you respect him you honor him sarah called abraham lord it's not a sign of worship the word lord means there i esteem you there is a beautiful position that god has given a man and a woman and ladies hear me this is very important because there is a satanic movement trying to awaken women in quote to their rightful place and while that has worked well it has crossed the boundary are you following me now where ladies believe that they can be a man ladies believe they can be everything there are all kinds of foundations rising up orchestrated by demons that are bringing ladies into rebellion against their husbands and in the home and they think let me tell you something your respect for the man especially when you get married is not just a function of his ability to provide a loan while that is true if your respect for the man is tied just because of his ability to provide you are violating scripture because agape is love without conditions it is a position that god has put you is somebody hearing what i'm saying we have to rush now we come to the world of the ladies guys listen very carefully love does not mean purpose for the lady get it very clearly visionless brothers destiny shaking men of god i announce to you that love for the lady has nothing to do with your destiny carry your destiny and your crusades and your one million salvation target and pack it away when you are talking about love from the sister's perspective sisters if i'm talking can you say amen because some of you have been trying to tell the guy you are so happy that he's seated near you now you say oh god let him say it god has answered your prayer already hallelujah you see because of the fragile nature the fragile nature of the lady and her emotional configuration did you know that the emotional configuration of a lady was designed on purpose are you following me now there are some of you ladies you are trying to make yourselves become men stop it two men cannot live in the same home hallelujah god designed this side of you to be able to compliment the man some ladies are as hard as a rock as hard as a rock it's not a gift to your husband no it's not a gift no man that i know would cherish that i'm not talking of i mean being strong and stable i'm talking of being hard insensitive emotionless you are a man you are not a woman a woman was not designed that way a woman was designed to respond a man was designed to absorb a woman will respond are you learning something those outside if you are following me say amen hallelujah so love for a lady means number one it means attention all guys say attention. attention say it attention in fact let me say it the way i say it all the time maximum care and attention write it those who are guilty are laughing maximum what it's like a graph you know that song nothing no place you must gauge that tip ladies will stretch you until they see the highest of the attention listen let me tell you something guys attention for a lady is almost like purpose for you when you do not give a lady attention and now we are going to define what we mean because this word is falling on different soils we need to redefine it hallelujah it means care everybody say care you must be caring to be caring means to be sensitive to needs to be concerned it means time everybody say time very important time it means affection affection this is an emotional bonding not sex 
emotional bonding for god's sake emotional bonding if you want to be a priest go to the seminary if you want to get into a relationship open your heart and allow that emotional dimension to find expression in every relationship praise the lord so for the guy What's the difference? Now, that does not mean, listen, please understand this. That does not mean these other qualities I mentioned in the lady are not appreciated in the life of the man. Are you following me now? But according to the order of priority. So if, if you're going out with Taiwo now and you meet her and you say, Taiwo, do you know what the Lord is doing in our midst? How was that meeting? And Taiwo is looking at you. She's smiling because she's trying to respect you. But I assure you, she's not hearing what you are saying. Praise the Lord. Guaranteed, she's not hearing what you are saying. You ate her food, licked the plate. You didn't even say whether the food is nice or not. This lady took out time, bought these heels. How many of you have seen these heels? Brothers, don't tell lies. If you appreciate it, clap for her, Jare. And you just come with your anointing that has blinded your eyes and all you see is souls even on your wife who is already saved ladies tell the brothers change shout it again change ah you are in for a shock this night we've not started though hallelujah so look up please we have a lot to cover respect and honor there are many of you ladies you are so rude hostile you wonder why no guy comes around you because they see themselves every time they see you disrespectful you are rude cruel you don't talk to anybody with respect that's how i am no brother wants to mortgage his prophetic destiny for that kind of wife is that true brothers let me tell you something don't you think prayers is covering the eyes of the brothers they are watching oh yes they are watching the bible says be wise like serpents the brothers are watching they are watching you as you are doing this this manly thing you are doing no respect you are just shouting at the guy and somebody that has been trusting god just says lord thank you for answering my prayers i've i've received from you every man is looking for a woman who will compliment him ladies i want to give you a big shocker right now there's no man that i know who is looking for a preacher everybody is looking for a woman who can be a wife to him He's already a preacher. He doesn't need another one. Ladies have this funny thing that they, you feel the more you are entering the anointing, the more attractive you are becoming for the guy. It's such a big mistake. The guy is looking at his children. He already knows he's busy. You are busy just like him. The guy is looking at who can help, who can cook at home. You're already going for five crusades in a week. He will marry you. He doesn't want to die for nothing is someone hearing what i'm saying that's why we have a welfare department to help us we can fast happily why there is a consolation imagine if all we have is prayer band we're in trouble as the ministers hallelujah please appreciate both of them god bless you So we have to get it clear. Love is very, very important. When the concept of love is not defined from the kingdom perspective, there is going to be chaos and anarchy. Hallelujah. Have you seen a lady look at a guy? Guys, when the lady comes to you and says you are selfish, ah, me, selfish, I'm providing money, I'm paying the children's school fees. Hallelujah. And the lady is saying you are selfish. And you are now wondering, is it that I'm not purpose driven? 
am i not praying enough what she's saying is you are not defining love from my perspective are you following me now very important now before we start pastor jake spoke about it here but let me define certain things the qualities that a guy must have before you think of entering a relationship and a lady we have to talk about that quickly there are qualities listen please look up if these qualities are not in you and you have been dreaming of asking a lady out in this place you better wake up from that dream wake up in jesus name the bible says, arise thou that sleepest and let christ give you light so wake up tonight and listen there are many brothers that think because you are macho and broad-chested and tall dark and handsome it just means that every lady is standing desperate like a leaf better repent of your pride and listen to these qualities that we have to explain is anybody following me tonight i already told you to laugh from the beginning look up please the bible says for us to have no business with the unfruitful work of darkness before you even consider a relationship or marriage with anybody let me tell you something that person must be genuinely born again write it this is not part of the quality this is what even qualifies you to begin to look at other qualities must be born again we live in a generation where ladies are becoming the holy spirit who have the exclusive ability to change any romeo they like let me tell you something come out of what you watched in that nigerian film don't get up and go and yoke see look up every lady every true godly lady must submit herself to the man the only choice you have is to choose the kind of head you submit to hallelujah don't choose any kind of head that will come and kill you he must be born again what does it mean to be born again to submit to the governing authority of christ the governing authority of the word a man that does not submit to the word of god can kill you there is nothing to give him boundaries there is nothing to define the terms of his relationship or marriage with you there is nothing to convict him you can't afford to go out with a man who is not born again there are many of us is those that are not born again that you like you say they are nicer than the brothers but they will take you to hell and you won't see any of the brothers in hell we are all going to heaven hallelujah say he must be born again guys say she must be born again every lady that threw every great man in the bible and in history were nice and beautiful ladies most of them did not have respect for the things of god hallelujah if you marry a lady that is not born again and is not serious with god some of you say uh uh but the guy is nice say that day pastor jakes even saw him didn't he greet you sir let me tell you let me tell you listen i'm answering a lot of questions here do not confuse morality with the presence of the holy spirit in a man are you listening to me willpower can only take you so far you do not know the power of i mean satan and demons outside of the word of god when you know that you will know that morality is not enough see let me tell you something you can get a course you don't like for five years you can struggle it wrestle it complain about it and just finish but when you get married after 40 years that man will change and wreck your life and you will wish you were dead some of you that's the case in your families now you have an opportunity to choose hallelujah so are you ready now now there are certain qualities that a christian brother should have 
We're, we're not talking about marriage yet. We're talking about relationships now. So every brother, every Christian brother or Christian sister that desires a godly relationship, we expect you to be building yourselves or to have built yourselves in this area. Hallelujah. Now, ladies, look up. I know that if I'm to call two or three ladies now, we don't have the time and ask you, what kind of man do you want? You first smile and say, hey. Hallelujah. You just carry your handbag. It's already written there. Yeah, because you've been praying about it. You bring out your hundred point agenda list. The guy must have the ability to carve his eyebrows. He must understand about nail filing and the rest. We don't want a brother with oil on his face as if they fried egg on the face. He must be posh and clean. Oh, you think we don't know? <laughs> Hallelujah. I like a brother that will do this, do that, do that. You want a brother that is exposed. Don't want anybody who will be disgracing you in the public. Praise God. You go to a restaurant before they see anything. They've not even prayed. They have started disgracing you. He thinks he's in his room. Now you are embarrassed. Ladies have a lot of things. But let me tell you tonight. Look up please. All those things will not work. Period. Did you hear me? All those things will what? Because even you, you are not prepared for that kind of man. The only man that fits all those qualities you are writing is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is not looking for a wife. But he has made us his ambassadors. Are you listening to me? You cannot say, oh, this guy must... Be. There are ladies who are so meticulous... Say, if I look at his skin, it must be fresh and this. Let me not see any funny thing. It must be without blemish. No, the lamb that will be slain. Listen, it's not wrong. It's just childish. You wrote it when you were in secondary school. Now you came to the university. Tear it. You are growing. That's, that's just the remedy. What you need is not deliverance. It's just growth. The Bible says, when I was a child, you were writing that when you were trying to keep yourself busy to write SSCA. This is almost 10 years now. Tear that thing. Grow up. Face a real world like a woman and a man. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There are certain virtues, Pastor Jakes called them, and I'll write it, cardinal virtues. That means there are some virtues that eventually they will develop themselves. Listen, ladies, look at me. If you are looking for a perfect man you have no ministry in the life of that man are you listening to me the purpose of the lady is to complete the man to help his inadequacy so if you are looking for a man who is already perfect you don't have a ministry in the life of that man praise the lord mm. are you getting blessed all right ladies what qualities should you look for in in the guy and guys these are the qualities you should be building yourself in number one honesty and sincerity quality number one any guy coming around your life who is not honest and sincere pack your load and run don't pray about it i'm already telling you the answer run honesty and sincerity the brother must be honest must be sincere you can't be at the back of rivadu that you know that part that dark part you are just sitting there and they just call and say ah maybe your wife or your girlfriend or whatever calls you and say ah I've, I've arrived lagos sky i just got there right now and she says are you serious well, how was the journey she says, i'll call you later i'm even too tired she says, i understand immediately you drop you just lie to the girl that is a distance call is your relative from uk that is calling you no sincerity 
Or you're calling one lady and the lady just comes and you pick up the call. You say, ah, you safe. As, as the money entered, does not enter. Hurry up now. Don't waste my time. I, I have a beautiful girl here to buy something for her. Why are you wasting my time? And you are lying. Sisters, are the brothers not like that? Brothers, don't feel bad. You know me. I always balance the equation. <laughs> Hallelujah. A dishonest brother will produce a dishonest husband, a dishonest father, a dishonest leader, and will kill you. Are you listening to me? Deal ruthlessly with dishonesty. It's better for the brother to say, Mio, I'm trusting God. God has not helped me yet. This shoe you are seeing is my only one. This trouser is the only one. This shirt is the only one. But the spirit of faith is in me. You are seeing me pray in every koinonia. I'm sweating in your presence. You are seeing that we are flogging out this thing. The door will open one day. Is that correct? Many of you ladies, you like guys lying to you. You have itchy ears. You like it so. The guy just comes to you and he's laughing and he just says, Hi, how are you? And this is not how he speaks, so just because you came. And the guy comes and he's bouncing and he likes you. And he says, ah, Sweetheart, I was wondering. Um, he said, Let me talk to this guy. I need to be at the airport tomorrow. What's your tomorrow like? I'm going to take the first flight tomorrow. I have to be back. There's something my, my dad sent a consignment. And can you imagine? This is boys. You know, they are taking my humility for granted. And the lady's melting. Hey. You know it's a lie. Your roommates are watching from their window. You know it's a lie. You like it so. You go back and you carry the lie and you are telling your roommates. You are, you are saying it as if you don't believe him. But you are saying it to increase your reputation. You are claiming that you don't like it. But you are telling everybody, shut up if you don't like it. Why are you telling everybody? Say, can you imagine? That guy came and met me and he was talking about one airport in me. He wants to play with me. Sister B, can you imagine? That guy, and you are claiming that you are not enjoying what he's saying. Honesty. Number two. The guy must be teachable. Ladies say teachability. Any brother that is not teachable is going to drown you you will follow him together and enter an ocean of trouble and he will drown you and brothers this is where we have to be very careful because you see we guys are egotistic in nature are you following me now it's very difficult there are some brothers here god must help you tonight your deliverance has started from your culture women don't talk to men from your culture women don't advise men is that true some of you are from royal families and you are taking your village everywhere you go even inside your relationship so you're with the lady and she's trying to advise you and she's saying um sweetheart have you considered this way said look let this be the last time even the bible said wives submit submit means shut up don't try me oh you are entering the fire and the lady is saying honey look at this we are entering fire say which fire guys fire is burning you i say which fire where is the fire and later you carry the girl and put together in the fire and it's burning two of you later you say ah it's true this thing looks like fire when it has burnt you and it's almost killing you brothers be teachable it's not a sign of weakness it's a sign of great strength these ladies may look like they don't know anything but i tell you something if you are humble and you can listen you will learn a lot of things any brother that is not teachable and arrogant and just believes you are the alpha and omega of that relationship the lady should shut up even if she's speaking nonsense one day she'll say something that is sensible you must listen many husbands have entered into trouble many husbands have done different things that that one plot of land that somebody came to swindle you land of 10 million you sold it for 2 million your wife was telling you be careful be careful say be careful for what all these women they are too emotional there are many of you if you will be teachable you know what teachability is teachability is 
your willingness to learn and your willingness to accept when you're wrong that's why we taught ourselves in our character building series on four words what's the first one can you remember everybody what's the first one please you must say please what's the second one i'm sorry apologize when you are wrong number three thank you you must tell people if they do good for you 20 times say thank you 20 times what's the last one god bless you you must bless people so you must be teachable let's hurry up number three brothers you must be visionary and responsible there are many guys you have not finished managing yourself don't add a woman into it there are many guys you you have not led yourself you don't have self-management you are careless you are in discipline now you want to bring another lady and add her into your predicament you must be visionary when you hold a lady and say we are going out where are you going to i always give this example how many of you have climbed bike and the bike man told you you were asking him do you know this place do you know cgc before he finished he said yes later he starts going with you he just passes somewhere he said oh god this is not the road he said oh sorry i forgot then he turns back later he comes and just passes and he's heading towards rema and you say oh god stop do you know where we are going he said, i thought you knew the place that's how many guys are you just bring the bike and hit the seat and tell the lady oh yeah climb the lady i used to say climb is it not me once they climb from gear one you go to the last one you are just speeding the lady says sorry you where are we going he said, leave me but we know have we arrived there be patient after 10 years you have not defined where you are going never go out with any guy you don't know where he's taking you to you better know where you are going no don't lead yourself like a sheep to the slaughter hallelujah hallelujah very important He must be responsible psychologically. <laughs> a guy who is always crying like a baby does not need relationship. He needs help and growth. Somebody just say, Kai, your hair is looking bushy. He's crying. It's the lady that says, come. <laughs> he says, see, things happen like that. The guy says, why is everybody doing to me? You are embarrassing the lady. They'll say, Abba, sister, is it that there was no guy? Which baby did you go and carry like this? You enter a program, there's a seat here. They say, sorry, stand up for somebody else. The guy is already crying. The lady now stands up to hold him. I say, don't cry. You are not ready for a relationship, my brother. Please, please, please. Focus on your finances or something else, your spiritual life. Because let me tell you something. There are pressures you are going to absorb in your life. Hallelujah. As a leader, you don't let people see your tears anyhow. It will kill their spirits. Hallelujah. Every lady needs a man that she can be secured around. A man that can protect her. I was told of a story that armed robbers came somewhere. Open this door now. Bow, bow, bow. The man just stabbed the wife and said, stand up. No, he, he was pretending like he was sleeping. She just said, honey... Honey, as he was thinking, honey, you must wake up. Oh. Are you hearing what is happening? Say, I'm hearing now. Why would you just keep quiet? The guy was sweating and shaking. True life story. The woman got up and started praying in tongues around her house. They were shouting, if you let us open this door by ourselves, this and that and that. Do you know that eventually when the armed robbers left and the woman came, she found the man dead. Yeah. What killed him? So who is protecting who? There are many of you, you like women, but you are very fearful. You don't have courage. You are not emotionally balanced. Please don't think of getting into a relationship that you'll be crying all the time. As if you are going to just one. You know how people go to just one and they cry. At a point, the lady is feeling, oh God, did you bring me to protect this? What did you bring me to do in this life? You are not a man. hallelujah so that, that's it for the guys cardinal virtues ladies brothers 
if you love your destiny and where god is taking you make sure you look at this <laughs> number one the ladies must be submissive every lady says submission look up please submission is not weakness submission is the ability to bring your strength under control are you following me now what is submission the ability to bring your strength under control you see this from many of our mothers the man can be shouting saying something and and our mothers are not wrong but they'll just keep quiet you will be wondering and say if i were my mother eh? how about we enter the same trouser see my mother my father is always doing with her she's even doing like musev eh? all this village with me but no man can try that you better shut up oh. you better shut up because your mother was once a young cc like you and was bouncing like that ask her why she's calm now hallelujah many ladies have this funny there are many things that we are doing that we don't know is childishness this night you will see that is just sheer childishness hallelujah submission very important bringing your strength under control number two can you imagine i'm, I'm just summarizing what pastor jakes has already preached so we have to run number two teachability ladies you must also be teachable there are some ladies gamaliel you always teach everybody gamaliel was the person who taught paul some of you are gamaliel you sit in the midst of brothers do you know this? the brother comes to talk to you yeah just like a proverbs this and that said this and that and you think you are impressing him the guy just gets up just tells his friend baby now let's just go somewhere that's not it it's not the way forward this is nonsense as you are talking the lady is just saying this is not a wife this is a man you are not teachable there are some of you no man can sit you down and talk to you no man you do something so even if he's a pastor you do something pastor jack said all right two of you come to see me he said me see you nobody brought me into this world though even my father doesn't you see that so who do you want to come and marry you who do you want be fair who do you want to come and marry this kind of trouble teachability number three sisters you must be physically attractive the brothers are not just spirits they dwell in bodies they have eyes my friend Jimmy says love is blind marriage will open your eyes sisters look up brothers look up too my brother you better don't deceive yourself if you are going far huh and you don't want to run it now when i talk of beauty beauty is a relative statement but you must don't carry a lady that you will not be proud of huh you just see somebody says my younger is just my younger sister or you just look and say almost oh, one lady that is disturbing me or me i'm tired i don't know what to do you kill the lady if you behave to a lady like that you don't deserve her Get out of her life and let the person who deserves her come in. Are you following me? Very important. Don't find yourself. You must be proud of the lady. Ladies, be physically attractive. That does not mean be pornographic or nude. You are a Christian. It means be nice. You are young. Don't celebrate your 50th birthday when you are 22. Be patient. The time will come. And all the brothers say... Amen. Amen. It doesn't mean you must have all the money. Look, we are watching. Brothers are happy when they see a nice sister. You are, you are, you are taking care of yourself. How much is powder? The type we use. How much is it? The type you use is ten thousand. That's too expensive. Get the normal. Who will know? Who will know? It's only among yourself, ladies, that you know. Will we know? See a lady just comes, there's, there's fats on your face, oily face, you are just moving, walking anyhow. You are just walking any. you can't even compose yourself. They are sharing food. Join the line, you want to collect, you are doing. 
all these kind of attitudes the brothers are watching you need to tell yourself myself behave behave the bible says you are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses behave hallelujah you must be physically attractive if you have one shirt iron it don't carry a shirt that is twice your size yes your mother gave it to you adero tell us reduce it Abba. must everybody know it was a gift you just carry needle and fold it and fold it and clip it can they reduce it the brothers are not idiots why we are praying in tongues <laughs> yeah please brothers look for what looks like your future hallelujah can i come to the brothers now oh i must come you know me hallelujah you see archbishop benson idahosa said don't criticize anybody until you have done twice what the person has done once hallelujah brothers if you want that kind of glamorous lady you must start working on yourself as up are you following me now there are many brothers you are bushy you don't comb your hair the dust is dry season but you still see at the back of your shoe mud of rainy season you are uh, no i will talk you must be physically attractive you wear one one singlet for two months It's easy to wear something on top. Who will know? You can't buy perfume of 500 naira. You just come, you are sweating. They say, hug your neighbor. Before they do anything, you want to hug. How much is sure? At least that's the basic one. Listen, you are a leader. You don't bob your hair. This side is more than this side. It's not like maybe it's a style. It's just disorganization of your hair. Because for a long time, you can't even go to the barbing salon and say just carve it let it be nice you finish bathing even oil you just you are trying to comb it you don't know whether it's back or front you throw the comb away and get up just come for koinonia and you just come and you are smiling you think it's everybody that is smiling with you <laughs> hallelujah your your clothes are always rumpled always 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 rumpled hmm? go and wear one kind of thing and carry one one kind of tie you, you stop here you now wear it and you are coming and you are just eyeing the sister she's not looking at you i assure you i assure you i assure you she's not looking at you hallelujah help us holy spirit we have to run you must be physically attractive both parties be smart we're not saying go and borrow everybody's clothes to come for koinonia with uh -uh. if you have been doing it stop it's not necessary god has blessed you god has blessed you hallelujah you are borrowing your roommate's shoe every week the day your roommate says it's coming for miracle service too on that day you wear your palms and sit outside even if you spams you have wear it honorably polish it can i tell you something brothers i discovered something with ladies they are not as materialistic as we think i tell you there are some ladies that love god and they are willing to start and go with you only if you will be honest sisters is that true it's not all of you that should say yes because some of you are very materialistic i'm coming to you so this was a summary of what jake shared hallelujah very important so how many of us have been blessed by those qualities 
how many of us know that there are some of them we need to walk in ourselves don't lie now lift your hands don't pretend i appreciate your honesty this is why we are here and god is helping us do you know why you need to work on these qualities it doesn't mean you have to be perfect but make sure there are honest efforts are you following me now so that you can be a blessing to one another everybody say i'm not a curse i'm a blessing say one more time i'm not a curse i'm a blessing hallelujah all right so we're going to talk quickly about entering into a relationship now the process the process of entering into a relationship again let me have one lady and one guy please can we have them quickly quickly we have to one lady Taiwo, please come again Aaron, god bless you one lady and one guy hallelujah please look up there is no crime everybody look up please there is no crime brother in seeing a sister that you love and you find yourself affectionate about it does not make you unspiritual emoji hello can you hear me there is no crime <laughs> there is no crime hallelujah when you find out as a brother a good christian brother sharing the word in a in a in a meeting like look at koinonia inside people are inside outside now you are you have been seeing this sister she's in the choir her name is taiwo <laughs> hallelujah always ministering something is moving something is changing hallelujah please listen i have to rush we have to be out of here now listen brothers when you want to end let me look at look at me do you know why this thing keeps backfiring for some brothers let me tell you one of the reasons. the bible says the labor of the fool will weary him not because there is no road he doesn't know the road to the city the reason why many of you is not necessary because you are not nice you don't know how to do this thing you will not seek advice you will not seek counsel you just see a lady like this after koinonia worship team they are holding their hands to pray you can't even wait let them finish the prayer you've got to stand close you are just moving around you can't wait they say hug 20 people you didn't hug anybody you are just gallivanting around the worship team square here as soon as they finish just say, sister please can i talk to you now the lady said well for the benefit of doubt we just finished fellowship say i've been watching you i have policeman you have been watching her what else i've been watching you and uh, the other day I, I was i was talking with my friend just says please please i know where you are going please i beg you just save yourself any stress it won't work you just get up and go to your room say this colonial lady self now I'll, let me just kukuma be sitting outside you look you you will pray these are people that are seeing us pray they know i'm a man of god yet you won't say yes hallelujah listen listen everybody say friendship, friendship. say it friendship. friendship this is the first step to entering a relationship you can't come and meet a perfect stranger because of your unbelieving roommates did it you just saw one 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 lady who just came in hundred level in her innocence her mother told her when you go here yeah, don't do now the guy just came to threaten her and they lay out of fear she just said oh yeah yes because she doesn't know what to have you too you were inspired by that testimony you now got up and met a christian sister who has been hearing the word you just come and meet her say i want to marry you pray about it what is wrong with you hey your father did it so what change see listen if your wife is your best friend that naturally tells you that the probability of finding her among your friends is very high correct the best friend is the best among friends is that true some of you you don't have friends 
This is what makes the sister know that you are ready to enter a relationship. You don't work with anybody. You don't greet anybody in church. Suddenly, ah, after miracle service, you have said Romeo around worship team. You, you don't greet anybody. You are not in any group. After prayer, band finishes praying, you just turn. You are, you, you are always alone. You are talking alone as if you are out of your mind. When the sister starts seeing you near, she's even afraid. She doesn't know whether you are fine or not. Something wrong with this brother? Does he need counseling? You must be friendly. Are you listening to me? Listen. Guys, let me give you a big secret. If you can make a lady laugh genuinely and sincerely, you have taken some good steps into that journey. I give you a tip that will work for you. Hallelujah. Don't carry your boring boring life your roommates should test run whether you are sociable or not they are always running away from you ah flog it in your room first before you go and disgrace yourself to one lady you are in love you are pretending like you are not in love you are just boning your face and coming to the girl you say can i see you? the girl say i'm busy come now you yourself Be friends one of the best ways of being friends is join a department join a department one of the benefits of a department is that it will help your social life is that true the worship team are so so if you see them you'll be amazed they love one another some of them were not like that when they started is that true the ushers ushers are you there they love themselves who do you love who loves you you don't know when you enter when see service in the house of god is a big helper to take you out of inferiority and complex they'll tell you lead prayer now you lead prayer and when you lead prayer ah, after the prayer meeting tyro says wow that was nice oh pure sisterly love no strings attached you too you are happy you didn't know how to do it now you can watch aaron do it you are you are learning who will know that you don't know tomorrow now you come they say oh go on another you are making progress are you making progress it's not like you are you join the department with the intention to marry the lady but you are becoming sociable it's giving them an opportunity to see your sincere heart is that true one day the lady comes late you stand up for her ah, ah. she says wow that was so kind you are learning you are reducing your journey you don't know some of you come from nowhere you see people who have been functioning they're taking their time you think you have the spirit of you just run from nowhere they don't know you you have no history you just came for koinonia twice you think you want a wife you just come and carry anybody we won't give you our ladies like that come and sit down hear the word of god we want to be sure of the kinds of things our ladies uh, you they can't be praying in tongues you come with your babylon from wherever because you did talking for two weeks you think it's enough to carry them no sir they are not that cheap <laughs> hallelujah entering into a relationship take time to build friendship see not friendship for the purpose of relationship be a free person be happy with people are you listening to me and ladies there are some of you you are not helping yourself make sure when brother smile and greet you you just say he likes me Habba. you are in a church what kind of insecurity is that a brother smiles at you he just hugs you you go back and say i've been watching it's a lie it's a lie please this guy is pressing into god it's a lie don't blackmail him he loves god you just see a brother like you and the next thing you start becoming edgy and funny everybody say friendship so Aaron begins to be friends maybe from department or something it may be in the same department it may be in the different department you know you are just serving in the house of God genuinely it gives room for the sincerity of your heart to be tested are you listening to me you are consistent in the body of Christ at least the lady sees you you are a face that they know around she knows what you are hearing you know what she's hearing is somebody hearing what i'm saying very important never go out with a guy who you don't know who is feeding him 
and you don't know what is entering his head. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The second thing is seek counsel. Seek counsel. Many people think this is an act of immaturity. Many of you do not know. Look at me, brothers. Let me give you a secret. If you don't respect us, these ladies respect us. Are you listening to me? By the time you start meandering around them, they will call us. They will say, sorry, yo, this guy has been roaming around not to be presumptuous. And you, you think you are playing smartness. Every time you see us, you will claim as if the lady is this and that, while the lady has already told us. And you will be disgracing yourself. Hallelujah. Very important. Seek counsel. There is nothing wrong. We are not demons. You can ask Pastor Jake. There are times that he comes to tell me, ah, so so and so so person. This guy likes this person. You can even see me jumping. I'm saying, yeah. Our people are entering good relationships. There are some relationships when we hear you have entered, we start crying. We start crying. You don't know the guy, but we, we know him. Hallelujah. Please seek counsel. Seek counsel. Don't seek counsel from unbelievers. Who tell you just try, oh. There is an age where guys will be coming, oh. You will get to an age, nobody will come, oh. Just try. Uh-uh. Hallelujah. When you are entering into a relationship, friendship, friendship now that does not mean you cannot see i know of stories of perfect strangers that they call it what they call it love at first sight i don't know what probability of it works in nigeria in nigeria hallelujah praise the lord seek counsel and then bless you sir. the next step is listen go to god and I, I want to talk a bit here about the concept of the will of god look up please as a brother you love god you are not a prophet you are not an apostle you are just a sincere believer who loves god praise the lord praise the lord and now you see matilda you've been looking at her and truly oh genuine love not lost if you find out that what is wrong with you is loss, come for counseling, not relationship. Counseling. We won't condemn you, but we'll help you. Genuine love, sincere love. Now you are looking at Matilda. Ah, ah. You've sought counsel. You go to God in prayer. Listen, listen. Now I want to correct a very erroneous concept about what people call hearing God. How many of you have heard what they call vision, seeing vision? That has put a lot of brothers under pressure. Please and please. The vision in Joel 2 was not women. Is that clear? Don't you brothers please. I deliver you from any heart attack you want to give yourself. To force yourself to dream dreams and see visions. There is nothing wrong. The Bible says God is at work in us both to will. Hallelujah. I love God. My heart is sincere. Are you following me now? Now Aaron sees Matilda. And you just say, oh, did you have a vision? It has made a lot of brothers to come with stories about their concept of the will of God. Because they know that if they, that's the gate pass into your life. So they, they've tried and tried. They just say, oh yeah, talk. God told me, please open the gate for me to enter. Be careful. God shows people visions. You don't see vision for any area of your life. When it comes to relationship, you suddenly become a prophet. Who sent you? Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? Don't be embarrassed. Ah, ah. The other day, you saw Rose. And ah, when you saw Rose, even you, you wouldn't lie. You were praying. The prayer point just disappeared. You cannot even know what I was saying again. And he was sincere. Ah, you try to say myself, behave, please. I'm in the presence of God. You were trying to look at Pastor Jakes. You were seeing Rose again. Ah, something is happening. Don't feel embarrassed. Are you hearing me, brothers? Don't feel embarrassed. The only thing is check it. Don't be foolish. Some of you, if you see that to you, that's God said. Uh uh, that's not God said. Because there are some brothers that what is happening to you is just infatuation. Ah, you saw this lady's hair. 
and wow you are smiling one day you see her coming out of ribado in the morning she has not taken her bath you just hear and say ah is that the girl i saw ah, i've changed my mind though and you want to marry her she will be pregnant oh. don't forget help us holy spirit is somebody getting blessed tonight if god shows you a vision if you're sitting and you just see abigail c 21 is that how many now ribadu ribadu is your wife you just say yes lord abigail where are you better come don't stop my destiny you don't do that the, but listen the bible says and mary kept these things to herself and you come you can come to pastor jakes and say sir this is what i saw about this guy because i saw this about this guy i saw this guy ab about the lady they can be able to help you are you listening to me don't just take initiative on the strength of your vision alone your vision can mislead you the bible says we see in part and so we what prophesy in part are you getting blessed please listen you love god you are praying for a life partner you are saying oh god please bring a lady into my life who will love you who will fear you who we can stand together and accomplish the purposes of god for our lives hallelujah suddenly you come for miracle service you just see natina And now you, you cannot even describe what is happening to you. Mama. <laughs> now Mama is wondering, ah, ah, Aaron, what is happening? I saw this lady just once and I, many of you feel embarrassed. You even cast it. Uh -uh. It may not be demonic. Are you listening to me? Try to establish good friendship with the person. And when you feel you've received advice and the time is ripe, listen, that takes me to the next step. Brothers have courage. Ladies don't kill. I think sisters, we need to tell the brothers this. Say brothers, brothers. We, don't we don't kill. Speak. 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 Say one more time. Brothers, brothers. Don't look at yourself. Look at the brother. Brothers, brothers. We, don't we don't kill. Speak. The brother says, sisters, I'm not afraid. Listen. There are some of you that kick any guy that comes. Listen, look at me. Look at me. Koinonia, hear me inside and outside. Never, please, let me start with the sisters. Never see a brother, no matter how much you esteem him, that he comes to you and then you try to just do anyhow with him and say, hey, you don't know that shoe has size. You got up. Forget. Don't let Koinonia fool you. I'm not your mate. Oh. Don't be stupid. If not because of Koinonia that is the house of God. You, you, you cannot see your type. You come and stand. Don't do that. Don't do that. The brother you are laughing at today. Wait and see the promises of God in his life. By the time what he's speaking comes to pass. You will be amazed. Are you following me now? I was told a humorous story that there was a time Bishop Oedeko asked a part. I was told, I don't know if it's true. Please, please, oh, I had it too. If it's not true, accept it as fiction. There was a man of God. <laughs> and the man of God said he asked one lady and she said no. He kept quiet. Then it was there was nothing, just the promises of God. The treasure in earthen vessels locked up inside. Later on, he asked his current wife, and she said yes. Some years later on, they were in a program and he saw the former lady. Now she was also married. And he told his wife, He said, See, I asked this woman, and she said no. The woman walked to her and said, Thank you for telling my husband no. You think that woman will sleep? Hi! You must say, God, no. this is how my destiny passed me by. Many of you want ready made. You don't want to pay the price and build. Hallelujah. When a brother wants to talk to you,
please give him listening ears especially when he comes with a heart of sincerity and responsibility even if you are not interested in the relationship present yourself in a way and manner that will not discourage him there are some brothers when they ask one sister since 2010 they've not asked another one again one day you wanted to ask the girl she just she was just you were going here she just came out you just turned as if you want to clean a chair no courage your heart is failing you everybody say take courage, take courage. sisters help our brothers it's not easy to come and stand before a lady and start rapping and talking stories hallelujah it's not easy it takes a lot of courage brothers is that true yeah. especially when you start giving one kind of face as if you don't like it you finish praying in your room and say god change my story give the brother a chance give him a chance please hallelujah is that true there are many brothers here that are sitting they want to enter a relationship but ladies you are hostile you are rude you leave an impression in the heart of the brother that will injure him it's not fair is that true and then brothers take it easy i know that no means wait for a guy so if the lady tells you no just don't say me i don't take no for i would ah, 30 missed calls between koinonia and her room 30 missed calls five text messages 500 naira recharge card you have called all her friends take it easy brother Haba. take it let her think say i can't sleep uh -uh. you better check whether it's lost or love whatever is pursuing you run to court run to court and go and flog it out with destiny don't be a pest around the lady like that you are going for a lecture you just say ah in fact you know i was about to call you that's how you follow her she's in the restaurant you go there money that you wanted to go to jordan bookstore with you paid for her food now you have not eaten you are hungry you've not done your assignment you are failing you are emaciating you are dying what is wrong with you <laughs> your roommate say what is wrong you say love <laughs> it's not love hallelujah are you learning something please praise the lord very important make sure you are convicted there are some brothers here please look up and i must warn you everybody say double dating is wrong say one more time double dating is wrong there are guys that have ladies in every faculty every faculty you have a representative and they don't know it's not good you are, you are a christian i hope you know that we don't believe in dating are you listening to me in the kingdom there is nothing called dating correct you know what dating is ladies let me explain to you so that you hate it very well dating is that you parade many ladies the bachelor ask some of them out sleep with some of them do all you can do and then start editing them one by one one by one one by one until you find the one that is suitable with you you've slept with them you've taken them out which lady do you know that every lady you see is somebody else's wife you don't treat ladies like that is somebody learning something double dating is very wrong very very wrong praise the lord hallelujah so brothers get close to the lady develop courage and talk sisters be open don't conclude on a guy and just say this is not my kind of guy what do you know about all your destiny somebody you are seeing today that you say may not be your kind of guy may be the greatest blessing in your life is that true hallelujah let's rush we have to pray now let's assume you successfully get into the relationship say amen. amen so you have flogged out issues and you are now in the relationship what do you do please write these are things that you must observe while during the relationship number one practice communication practice what communication one of the number one killer 
of marriages and relationship is no communication talk no matter how bad issues are talk talk how many of you know that a quiet person can be more dangerous than a noisemaker because if somebody is quiet you don't know what the person has in his heart or her heart talk talk hallelujah see because no matter how anointed you are listen when you get into a relationship are you following me patience come when you get into a relationship now let's assume abel is going out with patience abel stand up assuming come now hurry up hold our hands let's save time please hold our hands smile you too now smile. all right come now they are in a relationship please everybody listen do you know every time people come to me for counseling and prayers for relationship i tell them whenever you enter a relationship please listen see yourself as two farmers are you following me now two farmers holding a hoe together and you are going to the farm to go and plow the land ready-made relationship does not exist write it everybody has weaknesses and strengths when you say you love somebody next time you are saying you love a sum total of their liabilities and weaknesses many of you want a perfect man you want a perfect woman you will never find it because you are not perfect yourself are you listening to me now Ebe, where are you from you're from kogi where are you from now this is kogi this is benway two separate cultures is that true now they love god they all come for koinonia for instance for instance for instance except otherwise for instance hallelujah she has her mindset that came from culture he has his mindset that came from culture do you know that there will be frictions are you following me now those frictions are not a sign that the devil is eating you people up they are just a sign that you are human beings are you listening to me what is the remedy communication two of you sit down now find somewhere and sit down come empty shift for them sit down now we are acting with you communication communication talk about it hallelujah the guy does not eat pepper you you like pepper you like seeing the pepper you can carry it and put it in your mouth the first day you made gary for him you put pepper you were smiling ah the guy just touched it and he, headache just came on him and now the brother doesn't want to talk ha ah, this pepper is killing him he said you like it for i said come on this food was as sweet as you and now you are you are lying tomorrow you will suffer it again she will make beans add pepper on it she'll be telling everybody you know my guy likes my cooking he likes the pepper funny enough this guy is dying this pepper is killing him every time you eat her food you must have a runny nose brother what happened i say forget this everybody say communication. communication communication helps you to understand yourself the bible says husbands dwell with your wives according to knowledge love is not enough are you hearing me have you not seen a lovely roommate that you could not live with how many of you love your roommates but you cannot take that same roommate next session but you love them some of you you that some of you that are raising hands is your roommates that don't love you because of what you are doing hallelujah everybody say communication it will enhance your relationship are you listening to me there are many ladies that the moment you enter a relationship you already have your expectations that only you know i expect at least i give this relationship five days i should visit chicken republic that's what you have in your heart that's what you have wished and wondered every time i'm holding load let the guy that's what you have in your heart are you following me now after five days he doesn't take you out he's paining you but you cannot talk say it so that if it's not godly you can flog it together are you listening to me communication is one of the number one killer 
roommates that don't talk always fight the only way to know that he's angry is when he slaps you you say did he really hurt you he said it has been paining me why didn't you talk or got roommates why didn't you talk many ladies you are like that you don't talk you go and grumble to your friends and gossip to everybody and say this guy we went to the restaurant sam they were putting the ice cream on the machine chicken public he just started taking it couldn't we sit down me i hate this thing and you were laughing all through the euphoria of the excitement and the guy thought that that's what you like he will repeat it again tomorrow hallelujah you invited him for dinner he wore one tie the shirt was torn he didn't notice it wasn't his business you tell him ah sweetheart um see when there is this chemistry between both of you you have come to be honest and true to yourselves are you following me now and you can jokingly tell him say you self i'm going to buy you a new a new trouser that your trouser has tried she has come into your life you don't joke you are always serious you are always praying you are always fasting you don't discuss the things you should discuss if all you are doing in your relationship is bible study and prayer you are not helping that relationship okay sister the lord gave me a revelation shut up can't you talk about your lives are you not good what is your best food there are people if we call some people in relationship now you and you what is your best food the guy will say gary is his best food you you say is, is beans you don't know yourselves you are that much of strangers who is the holy spirit you know you know what are the 12 names of disciples you know you know when is jesus coming soon soon you know where are two of you going you don't know don't spiritualize things that you are supposed to do to help yourself are you hearing what i'm saying very important everybody say communication very important there must be communication during a relationship number two set boundaries everybody say boundaries paul said the although we are not under the law but the bible says the love of god does what please set boundaries some of you were in the world is that correct and you had relationships where you were in the world you could have sex anytime you want you can spend weekend in the guy's house anytime you want you can bath with the guy in the same bathroom now you are born again you have left egypt forced egypt to leave your mind in jesus name set boundaries set boundaries hallelujah you must set boundaries stand up again two of you come this side this side let's go so you discuss abel you are a great man oh you are going far but you are a man say i'm a man part of the reason why you ask this lady out is because you are physically attracted to her true or false please say it true or false that means if you get married to her you will sleep with her one day true or false and the reason why you are not sleeping with her now is not because you are an angel or a spirit is because you love the lord true or false when you enter a relationship you are vulnerable by default please are you hearing what i'm saying believers what does that mean you define it what rules that you don't define you will cross boundaries without knowing you can be a christian over 60 percent or more of christian relationships have people sleeping around the guy going to spend weekend in the girl's house the girl going to from koinonia now today is friday i'll be the grace of our lord jesus your load is outside you just carry the guy takes you in his car and he just goes i was a service say nice even if he's benihin you watch throughout that night sin is at your door correct say but me i i'm not i I'm, i don't used to sleep with the guy yet 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 keep going every day the bible says and lord settled near sodom he didn't enter sodom when they were coming to rescue him where did they find him in the middle of sodom this is how many people have gotten themselves into trouble discuss it sister you are not firewood discuss it you are emotional talk 
Abel, you tell her, say, look, I love God. And in this relationship, we are going to keep the values of the kingdom. If for any reason, any spirit or anything turns my head one day, don't be ashamed. This is somebody, are you saying it in, in the presence of the congregation? Please help me. Don't be disappointed that day. Oh, just help me. Slap me or run. Just do something. Remind me of my destiny. Just put a picture of hellfire on your phone. Do something that will help me. Sister, listen. And I must say this. Listen, we are humans. Church people are hypocrites and liars. Me, I'm not like that. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? Very important. You can't come and visit him by 11 30 in the night. Eh? He just had practicals morning till night. Then you came around. He said, I, 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 was, I was reading and I didn't know what to do with myself. Ah, you are looking for trouble, oh. You are looking for trouble. The brother is already on his boxers. He's trying to lie down. He's trying to sleep. Now you come in. He's going to marry you one day, oh. He's going to marry you one day. You are fast forwarding that day now. You will die. You are there to protect the brother's life, not to kill him. Can't you talk on phone? Am I, am I blessing you? This is the issue. I know we're out of time. We will pray, but we need to talk about this. It's very important. There are many anointed brothers that suddenly entered relationships and they found out that they are, they are sleeping with the lady and doing a lot of things to their own shock. Because number one, you didn't discuss it. Number two, you are not doing anything about it. Hallelujah. Very important. You must talk about it. Your roommates sleep around and they come and they are talking about all their experiences. All those devilish things. And you sit down, you are hearing it. Now it's affecting your mind. You don't know. You think because you are a Christian, it will just... No, it's affecting your mind. You are getting emotional. You are getting seduced by that statement. Before you know it, you find yourself and the innocent brother, because he likes you, will fall victim. Everybody say, I, I receive grace to set boundaries. Christians, I know what I'm saying may offend some of you because it's a kind of beg, are they your own. You have gone to extreme. Please, Abba. Well, if your destiny is colorful and you want to get there, Ask yourself a question. Are you ready for a child now? If you are not, behave. Brother, for every time you sleep with a lady, see the vision of a baby. Are you ready? If you are not, behave. Praise the Lord. Please define boundaries. Christian relationships should reveal the character of Christ. And you, sister, one day something comes upon the brother, whatever it is. Instead of you to help the brother, you now start going around. Ah! These brothers, I'm surprised. Oh, Koinonia, shut up, please. Did he tell you it's a spirit? Help him. Help him. Help him. Don't disgrace the brother. Oh, I will talk. Hallelujah. It's very important. Help the brother. And brother, help the sister. When she's calling you and you don't understand what she's saying in the phone. Be talking with one ear, be praying. Find a way, let your spirit be praying. Talk about the second coming of Jesus. Talk about the end of the age. Just say something that will bring the sister back to herself. Don't go and spend weekend in a guy's house. You are not married to him. All the sisters say amen. amen. I know many Christian ladies. Once it's Friday, somebody comes from Lagos or somewhere. You go and spend. How can you go and spend weekend in the house of somebody you are already emotionally attached and physically attracted to? You are vulnerable. Hallelujah. 
you are going to go and bath. The brother is watching you. Ah. You, are, you want to kill the brother? You are bathing. The guy is just singing choruses around your bathroom. Or God, go to the parlor. Trouble. If a guy lives in a house and you go, you can enter the parlor, you can enter the kitchen. But you, you begin to put yourself in trouble. See, all I'm trying to say is that create boundaries. Can I tell you something? Brother, when you start sleeping with a lady, I assure you, your chances of marrying her will diminish by a sizable factor. Because part of the things that you should make, how, make you want that lady is that she's keeping herself and it's supposed to be the blessing and consummation of marriage. Are you listening to me? Sister, you just open up yourself to any brother. He's just sleeping with you and telling you that, don't worry, in two weeks I'll give you an engagement ring. You wait and go and hear what he's saying in the midst of his friends. Hallelujah. Do you know, every time you sleep with a lady or you sleep with a guy that you are not married with, there is a seed of resentment and hatred that comes. That's what happened between Adam and Eve when they went out of the glory of God. Be careful. Be careful. Some of you watch every kind of film. The guy is here, the lady is here. You are watching all kinds. Please, God bless you. Please be seated. You are watching every kind of film. When I talk about all those film things, some of you think it's not an issue. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Put boundaries. Avoid things that arouse you people. Avoid things that arouse you people and get you into trouble. Hallelujah. You just see the guy. You just come and fly on the guy. He's on the bed. You just fly. Ah. <laughs> and the brother is smiling as if he's in control of things. You better, you better start praying. You are not in control. Very important. Hmm. Hallelujah. Build together. Everybody say I will define boundaries. You are in a relationship right now. You have not defined the boundaries. Do it tomorrow. Define it. How far is far? How far is far? Please define it. Hallelujah. Now, I will round up with this. There are many other things, but we're out of time. We really are out of time. Just give me a few minutes, five minutes, and we're out. Danger signs. Oh, this is important. You must write it. Danger signs that your relationship is nose diving or that your relationship may not work out. Danger signs. I must say this. Very important. Number one. When you find yourself consistently violating boundaries, that relationship may not work out. Did you hear what I said? Are you listening to me? What did I say? Consistently violating boundaries. No way. A time will come. Look at me. The lady will be so cheap or the guy will be so cheap. They will be like a rag for you. Discontent will enter your heart. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Take these boundaries issues seriously. I know some of you feel, why is he talking like this? Okay. Once you are consistently violating boundaries, every night, every weekend, you are coming to his house, all kinds of things. No. Your chances of getting married are being slashed down seriously. Number two. Number two danger sign excessive involvement of third parties in your relationship this is very important there are many of us the number of counselors and senators and members of the house of assembly in your relationship are too much too much you have a senate that decides on everything you want to cook for the guy upper house lower house must decide two of you cannot flog out issues this is what is killing many relationships. 
Hallelujah. There is too much involvement of third parties. Let me tell you something. God is my witness. And for years we've been doing this. Once we pray for people and bless their relationships, you can ask Pastor Jakes, we stay out. Are you listening to me? We don't come and say, oh, we are leaders over you and we are just scrutinizing. No, we stay out. We only come in if you invite us or where we see that guy, there is a need. Are you listening to me? Listen, if your friend enters a relationship, please stay out. What I mean stay out is define boundaries. Hallelujah. Praise God. Some of you are too involved in the relationship of your friends and loved ones. We don't even know whether it's the friends that are in a relationship or you are the one. You are too involved. You can veto things on behalf of your friend that is in a relationship. It's their business. Leave them alone. Please. Go and pray and wait for your own. Leave them alone. excessive involvement of third parties once you start allowing too many people to come into you they will confuse you they will make you to make wrong decisions at the end of it that relationship will not work danger sign number two danger sign number three when you find yourself this is important when you are consistently quarreling and manifesting rage over trivial issues just know that that relationship has entered the beginning of the end look up please look up when zuera's food suddenly stops being sweet promise food that you used to eat every day you were lean like you would die when you entered the relationship it improved on you now you can see zuera's food is not sweet again her hairstyle is not nice again are you following me now her text messages are not once you find yourself edgy over trivial things your heart has left that relationship Is someone learning something in this place? Quarreling over trivial issues. Do you know why? There is a scripture, we will not read it. But the Bible says, 1 Peter 4 verse 8. It says, I believe 1 Peter 4 verse 8, if I'm not mistaken. Love covers a multitude of wrongs. Look at me. When you love someone, you will give excuses for the person. Is that true? Yeah, danger sign. I like the red. Media, God bless you. Red. Danger sign. Quarreling and manifesting rage. You see a guy just comes. This is a lady that before, she's your queen. Eh? Transpose, let me sing a song. By two or three keys. You are the reason I'm here. You're the one for me. You're the one for me. That's the song you sang. Oh, don't forget. You are the reason I leave. You're the one for me. Smile. And the lady is just smiling. Now, listen. Suddenly, I've got my mind made up. addressing that attracted you to her suddenly becomes insulting everything everything once you find that kind of quarrel please let me tell you something if you are not ready to marry her leave her alone somebody else will like her don't put any lady under your care and frustrate her are you listening to me sisters i must tell you this danger sign that your relationship will not last if the guy you are going out with does not have anybody he listens to are you listening to me don't ever go out with anybody that cannot listen to people he will kill you one day he will beat you stand on you and be stamping you and you will die there and nobody will know there are some of us you are going out with guys nobody knows they don't listen to anybody nobody can talk to them Pastor Jake says, oh, I want to see him. He said, no, please, leave me. That kind of thing will not help you. Hallelujah. When you see these three things, three things happen. 
your relationship is nose diving you need counseling and you need help fast hallelujah number four maybe we'll talk about we'll still talk about it next we'll stop here because i still have a lot of things to talk about there are two issues i want to talk about that many people don't discuss in relationship number one is on the issue of health and marriage but we'll talk about that next week is that correct health and marriage this has become a serious issue if somebody is an ss and she comes and she's in a relationship with somebody who is an ss can it work will they work hallelujah and then the issue of crossing boundaries hallelujah somebody from katsina marries an irobo lady what what happens when you are crossing boundaries the place of family and so on and so forth and then we'll address the issue of late marriage family life there is a lot we'll talk about how many of you have been blessed so far rise up let's pray we'll take that next week hallelujah lift your voice and pray for one minute say lord thank you for your wisdom i believe that god has spoken to many people tonight there are many of you that need to change things you need to adjust things tonight very quickly i'm going to pray please pray we're out of here please pray those of you who have crossed boundaries in your relationship i like you to pray and say lord i ask for grace honestly be honest with yourself no one condemns you but be honest virtues that you need to build teachability some of you sisters need to go and work on yourself seriously. The way you are right now, you will not be a blessing to any man. You can be a blessing, Kai, but you are not yet a blessing. Same with the brothers. Lift your voice and pray and say, Lord, help me. Help me. I want my marriage to glorify you. I want my relationship to glorify you. I don't want my children to come and find a curse. I'm tired of the things that I saw in my own family. Hallelujah. 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 Now, when I was preparing for this, the Lord told me to take one altar call and I'm going to pray. Just one virtue I want to pray for people. If you have been, the Lord told me this, please. If you know that you have a problem with anger and temper, I'm going to pray for you. Listen. Don't stand there judging the people that are coming out. Are you hearing me? This is a family. None of your business is their personal affair with God. It may not be that you want it so. There are people. Is this the guys and ladies. You just find you can be angry. It's one of the things that is stopping you. I'm going to take an altar call. Please. Find, come out and come and forget about nobody's really has any business with you whether or not you please come out quickly inside and outside be honest before god come and kneel down here just kneel down and line up here a rage and temper some of you is what has destroyed your former relationships don't be afraid don't let anybody scorn you please hurry up everybody come and kneel down come out of her right now now devil of come out come out now come out of her come out come out of her it's a spirit it's not your fault don't pretend listen listen don't stay outside when you should be here don't pretend this relationship series is to let me tell you koinonia is a family nobody has time for you everybody has time for their own destiny some of you this is what has killed your relationships you get into a relationship anger rage you can carry anything you can carry bottle and tear the guy's head and tell him sorry later on this is demonic 
Hallelujah. Don't be ashamed. You are a Christian. Nobody is doubting your salvation. God wants to help you. Some of you are very kind. But if the brother dear does anything, you will give it to him from your mind. You don't know why you are doing it. Lift your hands. Because I'm seeing a lot of spirits. I'm going to pray. When I pray, the power of God will move across this congregation. That thing will be broken. Are you listening to me? We've taken time, but let's pray. Our relationship series is not just about love. We are setting people free. This is what is stopping some people. When I was preparing, the Lord told me, make sure you pray against this. This is why some of you cannot enter it. You are a pretty lady. You love God. You are sincere. Lift your hands, everybody. Rage. Lift your hands very high because I'm about to pray. Fire will fall. Father, in the name of Jesus, every spirit behind temper and rage right now, in the name that is above all names, let the fire of God move across this congregation come out of god's people now come out come out come out come out that spirit of anger that spirit of rage let the power of god move across right now i set you free i set you free i set you free Come out, go, 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 washed by the blood of the lamb and i declare that every spirit of anger while you are praying it some of you you will feel something leaving you literally it will jump out of you i tell you you just keep praying it will jump out of you say in the name of jesus this spirit of anger this spirit of rage Come out of me right now in the name of Jesus father I declare look at me there are many of you that are in beautiful relationships God ordained relationships but this spirit of anger and rage when you are angry you can do anything this is what has destroyed you somebody offends you it will take hundred days saying I'm sorry before you accept is satanic tonight be delivered in the name of jesus tonight i declare you free in the name of jesus i declare you free in the name of jesus god bless you please rise up and go back to your seat quickly now the second altar call you've never given your heart to the lord some of you don't need to go too far because you're coming back please don't pretend it you've never given your heart to the lord that's the greatest relationship you must have inside and outside as you hear his voice right now or you've given your heart to the lord once and you found yourself derailing i'd like you to leave your seat and come out here quickly please appreciate them because they are coming thank you for tonight we ask that even as we look upon your word like never before you unveil your word to us tonight to pray you give us direction, you give us insight. By the power of your spirit, we ask that God, you strengthen areas of our lives that need strength. We bless you for your holy. We bless you for your might in our midst, O Lord. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your presence. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. Just quickly walk up to six people and tell them you're welcome to God's presence. Give them a big hug and tell them you love them. Aha! I'm not seeing no one hugging. Nobody's hugging me. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Please let's have our seat. God's presence. Be seated in heavenly places. Praise God. I hope you, are, you know you are seated here, but you are seated with Christ in heavenly places. So tell your neighbor, on that seat, you don't need seat belt. Hallelujah. Because you can't fall off. If God keeps you on the seat, you can't fall. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless God. Um, we'll begin a series. We'll begin to consider a very important series. Very fundamental and important to the body of Christ. Hallelujah. This has been a reason why a lot of people have had crashed marriages, crashed relationships. Hallelujah. And as a matter of fact, you'll find out that this is one area of the, of the institution in the life of a believer that God has placed that Satan attacks in a very strange way. Praise God. So you can see an anointed man, a great man, but sometimes, if he's not careful, Satan will attack this area of his life. Praise God. So please, I want us to pay attention tonight. Pay attention tonight and like never before, we'll still have sessions to pray. As God grants us grace and as we speak and as we share some of these things, please pay attention because just in case we mention areas that concern you, some things we'll be sharing, maybe things that you had gone through in time past. They may have been scars that Satan had marked in your heart. I made you feel you can never have a perfect one again. You can't have a good one again. I want you to know that the Lord says in his word that I know the thoughts I think towards you. They are thoughts of good and not of evil. They are thoughts of peace. They are thoughts of beauty, thoughts of glory. And God is not a man that he will lie, nor the son of man that he will repent. If he said a thing, then obviously he has the ability to cause those things to come to pass. Hallelujah. So you need to, sometimes you need to run back to the word of God and see what God says about your life. Praise God. If Satan tells you today you are dying, you can't die. You know why? He's a liar. How can a liar tell you you will die and you will be worrying yourself? Hallelujah. There's one word that goes out of the mouth of God. That word has an ability to sustain everything that concerns your life. Everything, precious people. I tell you precious things. Hallelujah. Very important. We'll start a session about relationship. Hallelujah. Relationship, the marriage life, and the family. Praise God. So we'll begin tonight. I'll just begin tonight by introducing. Hallelujah. Just introducing it and helping us tonight. And from there we'll see how God leads us. Praise God. Please, as we begin this journey, okay, I'll encourage you. I know many of us have questions to, you know, you have questions that have been running through your mind. You've read different books. You've heard different messages. As a matter of fact, you've heard different people speak. As a matter of fact, some have observed different circumstances run through the lives of people. And you've wondered, and at times you begin to wonder what exactly is God saying or what, what exactly is God's thought, is God's mind towards relationship, towards marriage. Because some people have a mindset already that you can't have a very fruitful relationship. Hallelujah. Praise God. You'll be surprised when you ask people. If we do a, we do a survey right now, we cut across and just a cross-sectional survey. And we just call a few people out and we ask them, what do you think about relationship, about marriage? You'll be stunned. Precious things, don't even be surprised. There are believers that believe in their mind from some forms of doctrines that as a man, one wife is not enough for you. You need three. Three wives. And some may even run back to scripture and quote and said, Our father, Abi, David, Solomon. And we are sons of what? These people. We, we, we walk in their covenants and we enjoy them. So, the guy can keep a, a whole room. Okay, they call them haram, I think. Basically, and he believes in his mind that it's okay to have more than three wives. Not even one. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, 
Because, you know, we must understand how God sees these things. We must understand this constitution. Because, you know, the Bible says marriage is an honorable, what? Is an honorable thing. Money, marriage is honorable before God. Hallelujah. Praise God. All right, quickly. Amos 3.3. Amos 3.3. Then Luke 14, 28. Pastor Sam, you help me please, sir. Help me read Amos 3, 3. Yes, Amos 3, 3. Sorry, let me help you with the mic. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Will a lion roar in forest when he had no prey? Will a young lion cry out of his den if he had taken nothing? Can two walk together except they be agreed? Can two walk together? Hallelujah. The first thing we see is can two, can they walk together except they be agreed? Luke 14. Help me, sir. For which of you intending to build a tower seated not down first? And counted the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it. Hallelujah. Praise God. This is very important. Praise the Lord. Very important that before you consider, guys, are there guys in this building? Guys, please, before you stand up, hallelujah, and get your dictionary words. Amen. Those big, big words. And approach a sister. You first consider can two work together except they have been agreed. Then you count the cost. You know why a lot of people just think relationship is what some see on the street. They see a young lady walking up on the street and they just follow her and talk to her. I want you to know that relationship is beyond that. And in the in the context we are speaking about, we are speaking about a godly relationship. We are not speaking about the relationship people do that they do not know where it's ending to. We are talking about a relationship you begin that is tending and the end result is a godly marriage. That's what we are talking about. Hallelujah. Just briefly in five minutes, I will invite our daddy, Prof. The reason is, daddy has been counseling people for years. And... It's very important that we sit and you know what we sit and really get to examine and see that we understand first the purpose to which God instituted marriage hallelujah the purpose to which God instituted relationship and you plan and see that if you are not ready for marriage then there's no point to start a relationship is that clear hallelujah because you don't get into a relationship because everybody's getting into a relationship. Do you understand? Because we, we, we are in an age and era where when people are pressured, when young men are pressured, four of your friends are entering a relationship and guess what? The guy just feels men is time. Or because he's growing beers. Hallelujah. Beers is not a reason to get into a relationship. Talk to your neighbor. Ladies, tell the guys, your beers... <laughs> it's not the reason or it's not the guarantee or the criteria or rather the criterion for you to ask me out <laughs> praise God hallelujah what is our goal tonight is to bring believers to an understanding of biblical principles to godly relationship and family life this is what we intend to do tonight to help us see God's intention for our relationship, for our marriage, for our family life. Please, as we speak tonight and as we share briefly from God's word before we pray, please I beg you tonight, guys, there are things you, you have to open your heart to, to learn from God to help your life. You've heard some of the testimonies, some of the things you've shared. It takes a man to be humble, to open himself to some of the dealings of God to see that truly this is something I don't have my wife has hallelujah 
Because it can be in your relationship too. Hallelujah. But many men, some people have had broken relationships. The reason is this. They've not been able to manage it. You must learn how to manage some things. Hallelujah. First, we'll just quickly redefine love. I know love to some people is flowers. Hallelujah. Because, you know, we must edit our understanding of love and definition of love. Especially some of us that have opened ourselves before. You see, I think many years ago, God began to help me understand love from his own paradigm. And, you know, the way God sees love and the way God expects love from believers is actually not what a lot of people practice. Hallelujah. Because to some, they see love as what they've seen in some of those films. Possibly, uh, I know there was one, is it Paloma or something? Yes, Paloma, you see people running then, running to social center to watch. You see the guys hanging and watching like this, and it was so surprising. So the lady will expect that the guy will come and kneel down and hold a rose flower and say, I love you. Hallelujah. Praise God. But, you see, we must understand how guys see love and how ladies see love. Praise God. I'll give you a scripture to help us see this. Praise the Lord. Because first, the guy sees love and the guys will bear witness to it. The guy sees love as respect. Praise the Lord. Ladies, the guys see love from a standpoint, from a platform of respect. Let me give you a scripture. Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 5. Quickly. Let's just quickly run through this. And Chapter 5 verse 33. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself. And the wife, see that she what? Reverence her husband. Amazing. They would have written, let the wife also see that she what? Loves her husband. Are you following? Why? Because, ladies, the guys see love from a standpoint of what? Respect. While the ladies see love from a standpoint of what? Love. They are emotional. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, what the guy sees, he sees love as, as the lady comes to him and he expects that the way she will love him is that she will respect his assignment. Because guys are, you've heard what daddy said. You see, guys are, they are assignment driven. They are couples. They are calling. That is what, one thing that drives the guy. And you know what? He sees that the lady loves him if she supports that vision. Are you following? Praise God. Hallelujah. But now this is it, guys. You must also understand how the ladies see love. Because ladies see love as time. See, some of the ladies are smiling already. Attention, care, and affection. Yes, I just saw a sister smile, one big smile from there. She's saying, yes, tell them again. Praise God. Because, you know what, they see, because by their makeup, you tell a lady you love her, and guess what, you just come and, Tyler, please come. I've seen some guys do very strange things, and, and he spends the whole day talking to her and says, see, God has called me to do this. This is the vision God gave me. This, that, ah, ah. And the woman is wondering, almost every time, oh, if he calls her, what is on his mind? Especially a man of God, he's saying, so you see, I have a crusade here, I have a meeting here, I have this, that. But you know what? This is what the lady says. Sweetheart, have you eaten today? Do you understand? Wow, and you know what? He pays attention to what details her hair. She made one fine hair, and she walked up to you. And the first thing you are seeing in your mind is you are thinking, man, we need to pray. We need to pray. Oh, God. 
Oga. Praise God. You know, back then when court used to be open, we used to have very interesting, uh, interesting sessions. Thank you so much, Twitter. We'll see people sit and there was one brother that used to come with one sister. The guy will talk in and hold his Bible. And when they stroll in, hallelujah, when they sit, they don't discuss anything. They just pray all through. Ah, I say, man, these people are tough. Or they'll share scriptures. Do you understand? Why? Because a lot of these things is the guy is full. Not because he's bad, but you see, the guy you must first understand from what perspective ladies see love. And you must understand from your own perspective how, what, you see love. Praise God. When you understand this, that ladies, that the guys see love as what? They are conscious of the assignment. And when you support the assignment, you respect it, you honor them. You know this guy is he's purpose driven. And the guys, you know, the ladies see love. Their own understanding of love is when you give them time, attention, when you give them care. When you tell them, because they are emotional, you tell them, I love you. You call, you send text messages. Are you seeing? You spend time with her. She sees that as love. Praise God. That explains her love life. She, ex she understands that as love. Hallelujah. Praise God. Not understanding this has led a lot of people to have problems in their relationship. Because you know what? In spending this time with her, showing affection and all that, there's a major capsule that is revealed there. Communication. And earlier on, daddy spoke about that. He mentioned that communication. Because you know what? You spend time calling her. <clears throat> because there's a temptation to spend time building. If you're, For instance, you're a businessman and you are having business ideas, trying to organize business seminars and all. You can be so driven and consumed with that. It's on your mind. Every time you see her, you forget to be conscious of something about her. Appreciating her, seeing something lovely about maybe her hair, her dress. Can you imagine that sometimes some ladies in relationship will paint their nails and you know what? They will feel pained and sad that the guy did not notice it. They will even be dangling the finger like this. The guy will not see. <laughs> Hallelujah. Do you understand? Praise God. But the guy will not see. The guy is thinking of the seminar he's planning to organize, the business seminar. Praise the Lord. But you know what? Sometimes all these little things, as little as they are, if they are not managed properly, these things will result into some kinds of issues in relationship. She'll be having suppressed issues. Suppressed. She's going through many things. I know what? She's swallowing some of them. And for some that don't talk so much in the relationship, they, you have to unwind them. You know some people, you spend a lot of time. You spend... Almost 15 minutes. There's something wrong with how, but you say, what is wrong now? Nothing. <laughs> so you have to start trying. You almost want to start singing praise and worship. <laughs> praise God. Hallelujah. Alright, what are some of the issues? Let's just quickly see some. Inability to relate with one another from this plane of understanding, as I said earlier. Truly, if you do not understand this, if you are driven by your purpose, your calling and all that. You know, you may have problems because you come to her and suddenly you are, you are passionate about this. And guess what? You are talking about it. You expect her to buy into this vision. And suddenly she's looking at you. That you've not asked me if I've eaten today. You've not asked me. You didn't ask me how did my day go. I told you I went to town. You didn't ask me how was it. As, guys, these things may look ridiculous. In your mind you're like, why should I be asking how the day was? You are looking fine already. You are looking okay. But guess what? You come up to hand. You begin to now talk about, ah, your friend that called you from where, this, that. And she's frowning. And you are wondering why she's frowning. Are you seeing? So it can happen over and over. Or she made her head this three months. You didn't say anything. She had to remind you. She made the hair again. You did not pay attention. She had to remind you. Let me tell you the truth. One day, she will just look at you. And tell you, you will be making hair. You don't you see? Are you blind? <laughs> Hallelujah. And you are wondering, that, what is there? As in, sorry now. But you know what? Little things like this. Little things like this have resulted into relationships. 
people having problems over and over, over and over. Do you know as little as it is, I was listening to a couple one time and they were talking about something very interesting, something very small. His, him and his wife began to have quarrels. You know what happened? He likes pressing his toothpaste from the middle. And guess what? She likes pressing her own from the end, from the bottom. She will now tell him, press this thing from the... And sometimes he will forget, he will just press the thing the way. He began to have real serious issues. Because she will be frowning, she will feel, this guy, you are not trying to, you know, you are not doing this thing well, you are trying to just make me angry, you are not paying attention, I am telling you, correct this thing. And to him it was nothing, whether you press it from the top, from the middle, from... Are you following? But as little as this is, do you know, as little as salt being plenty inside food, can really cause problem are you seeing praise the lord hallelujah some issues possible issues that arise in relationships too we've gotten the opportunity by god's grace to speak to one or two people and sometimes some ladies you begin to relationship and you know what now the guy likes to touch hallelujah and guess what truly in her heart she knows this is wrong sometimes this can be so suffocating in a relationship that most times the lady will she may respond in a very funny way do you understand what i'm saying why because in the first place boundaries were not set are you following boundaries were not set why because we are saying something here we're saying that the relationship we're talking about here we're talking about god relationship leading to what godly families godly marriages are you following what we're saying godly please take note of the word godly godly if you like you add godliness godly that means you invite god into it you invite the principles of god into it hallelujah things we must take note of very well in relationship that means issues can come when there are no boundaries are you following when you start up a relationship, don't just feel spiritual and say, she's a woman of God, I'm a man of God. No, Allah, you move on. It's not true. Eh, eh. You will sit and you know what? You talk. You say, see, by God's grace, you pray. And you tell the person, see, these things we will not do in a relationship. No touching. No kissing. Some of you that want to write and ask questions, should we kiss in a relationship? No kissing. If you kiss, where will it lead to? You say, Paul said, give an, uh, one another holy kiss, Abby. Okay. You tell me if that kiss is holy. Praise God. It's only holy the day the pastor tells you you may kiss the bride. Praise the Lord. Are you following? Okay. No touching. That means, see, if you define this relationship well and you both agree that these things, these barriers, you will not cross. Let me tell you the truth. It will help your relationship. Some issues will not arise. Speaking about it first. So that you don't just pretend as if you are in the spirit. You will find out that blood is running through your body. Hallelujah. Daddy said something that is very interesting. He said, you find out that your heart is not stone. Praise God. Hallelujah. Why? Because you know what? In relationship, you are attracted to the person. That tells you that you know what? Physically, you are attracted. You spend time together. But these boundaries are the things that will help you. They are like laws that help to shield you. Hallelujah. Some other challenges can actually arise and arise in relationships. Some of you have, are going through some, you have some issues in your relationship. We may not be able to mention all, but guess what? You, you know what you are going through. You know some issues that are arising that are causing you guys to quarrel. For instance, some people do not have patience. I've spoken to people and some tell me the moment they call the person, if there's one little misunderstanding, she'll just cut the phone. Yeah. She'll cut the phone. And the thing will be pissing the guy off. He'll be getting angry. Or if he does something, she'll now cut the phone or he will cut the phone or shout at her. Some guys will say, are you not hearing? And you will raise your voice and shout. Let me tell you the truth. Let me be honest with you. There are things that if we do not work on, we'll find out that 
Some of the Nigerian films we watch and you see some drama happening, you find out that you act your own Nigerian film in your own house with real serious issues. Hallelujah. It's a serious issue because you know what? We must learn to work on some things in our lives. The Bible calls the woman the virtuous woman. Virtuous because she's built character. Hallelujah in her. Praise God. Qualities required for godly relationship. Quickly, let's see. Number one, there are some qualities that you cannot play with. As a, before you go to pray, we'll come to that. And subsequently, as apostle begins, opens up more of these things. Tonight is just more of an introduction. Let me tell you the truth. There are some qualities that you do not play with. As in, you don't even, it's not a prayer point. It's an issue that you know, you don't need to pray and ask God, God, should I? Number one, born again. Touch your neighbor and tell your neighbor, born again. That means the person must be a child of God. Are you following? The person must be what? Born again. Hallelujah. Please tell your neighbor, born again. I'm not talking about that one that they will ask you. You say, eh. You say, is the person born again? You say, eh. He's, he's not born again. If you are thinking of, eh, the person is not born again. Why? Because the Bible says, do not be equally yoked to unbelievers. Hallelujah. Please don't be tempted. Don't be caught in this web. That the person is, does not believe in what you believe in. He's not even, you know what I mean. He's not saved. He does not believe in your faith. And I've seen and I've heard some people say something very funny. They will say, the person will change. Maybe God brought me into the person's life to all change the person. <laughs> You are not the Holy Spirit. Please tell your neighbor you are not the Holy Spirit. It's only, only the Holy Spirit that has the ability to convict one and change one. So you are not doing the ministry of the Holy Spirit. So some will tell you that, um, I'm sure God sent me to this person's life to change him. I know that's why God brought me. To get him born again so he'll go to heaven. The point is, why you are there is you are trying to change that person to marry the person. Hallelujah. It's not a sincere quest or a sincere true hunger or true love that you want the person to be saved so if the person is born not born again there's no need to go and pray and ask god so you don't need to walk up to bishop stan and say bishop stan please i'm considering this person will you pray to find out if it's god's will there's no need to pray number one quality we said what born again this is foundational and you know what it's compulsory it's a pericusite it's a core 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 pericusite as a matter of fact you must you must do this one first if you are seeing a brother, sister, and whatever you see, oh, if that person is not born again, there's even no need to see beyond that. Hallelujah. If you are seeing anything, close your eyes. Just tight or well. Tight or well, don't see. The person must be what? Born again. Number one, born again. Hallelujah. Praise God. Then some other things we, um, that can actually be are relevant and important. Okay? They are important for the guys. Ladies, please take note of this from the guys. When you see a guy, one of the things you first look out for is this. Him being born again first. Honesty and sincerity. Honesty and what? sincerity praise God honesty and sincerity see guys sometimes we need to do away with culture I remember doing a service here one of my friends in his mind and from his cultural belief system he believes the man should not even go close to the kitchen I ask you a question where did you learn that from Hallelujah. That's his mindset. Some men believe if they, their wife will come and give them something, she will kneel down first like this to give them. Are you following? Some cultural things we believe, you'll find out that some of those things may challenge our relationship. Are you understanding? Praise God. Praise the Lord. So, in the guy's 
honest belief. He's honest. But you know what? He's honestly wrong. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, one thing you look out for in a guy, precious sisters, is this. Is that, you know what? The guy is honest. What do we mean by honesty and sincerity? If he tells you today that I'm here, you call him and you ask him, where are you? He's true to it. This is what will make him not double date. This is what will make him to be sincere, to tell you truly. And you know this is this guy. Not a guy that is with one sister and you are asking, where are you? And you know what? He'll say, eh, I mean, I'm praying. I'm praying somewhere. Are you seeing some things? You must be honest. As a guy, sisters, you must look out for a guy that has what honest in his life. That there's honesty and he's sincere. That means, and it comes as a byproduct of what is relationship with God and his love for God. That he's truly honest. From walking with God, he's true. He tells you where he is. He's faithful and true. Hallelujah. When I mean faithful and true, I mean he's open. You can see that this is how this guy is. There's no, you can't, he's not a bit deceitful. You can see that truly this guy is just straight. Hallelujah. Because honesty in, in a man is very important. I'm telling you the truth. It's very important. This is what will make a man look and even tell his wife that, see, I'm going through this challenge. You heard what daddy said earlier. He said, sometimes when he's going through some things, he opens up to his wife and she's able to shield him. Are you understanding? Praise the Lord. Another thing you look out for is teachability. Teachability. What do we mean by this? Willingness to learn and accept wrong. Guys, because we are growing, we are not yet perfect, we are growing onto perfection. There's a possibility of what? Erring or making mistakes. You can make a decision that is wrong. Hallelujah. It's possible. But you know what? It will take a humble heart to admit that I am wrong. And you know what? Remember the languages we learned? One of the languages, I'm sorry. And she tells you that, sorry, you, you did this thing wrong. And you know what? You turn and you say what? I'm sorry. Hallelujah. But you see some men. Because they think that if they say, if they tell people that they are sorry, you know what? They admit what? Failure and weakness. So they don't say, I'm sorry. He said, hey, but you should know now. You should know how. You made a mistake, Oga. Admit it that you made what? A mistake. Simple. So, ladies, you see this in... The guy. If you have seen a guy that you know, you tell him that, sorry, sir, this thing was supposed to be like this. And you know what? The guy is adamant and saying, what is it? No lady talks to me. No, you don't dare correct me. Just know that if you marry this one in your house, <laughs> praise God, God will help. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God will help. Praise God. Precious ladies, one thing you should look out for is the guy visionary. Does he have vision? Vision. Vision and responsibility. Is he just crossing his leg in the sweet by and by? Trusting that mango or coconut will fall from heaven and will fall and open up and money will comfort, glorious things will comfort, a house, a car. He's just sitting and he's telling you that um, my father is a rich man. When my father dies, I will inherit his wealth, then we will marry. That guy is not responsible. Praise the Lord. You must look out for a man that is visionary. Visionary talks of he knows that he knows his assignment. He knows what God has called him. He may not have seen the full picture, but guess what? He has a very good idea that is enough for him to move. When God met Adam, guess what? God had given him an assignment. Praise the Lord. So when Eve came, you know what? She was a helpmeet for an assignment. Are you understanding? So the guy should be visionary and what? He should be responsible. Responsibility is important. Because guys, when God took the woman from the side of the man, you know what? He took her. He tells you that, you know, the woman is to be protected. She's to be cared for. She's to be provided for. This is why the Bible says, and therefore, a man will leave 
He didn't say a boy. A man will leave his own parents. A man will leave. This is why we said you must sit down and realize what has, what did God call you to do? What are you planning to do? You must get up and be responsible. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Because you know what? Many times some people like to boss and you, you don't just boss and say, I'm, I'm, I'm the Lord of Lords. I'm on, I'm, I'm on top. I'm the one that should be ruling and all that. Let me tell you the truth. You must stand up. It's your responsibility that places you in that position. Hallelujah. So the guy, you must look out for responsibility in the man. Not a guy that is just sitting, wasting his life. He's not ready to make any judicious effort. I'm not saying he must be made. Are you following? Please get the balance. He mustn't be made, but you know what? He should be responsible. He should be responsible up and doing and have a plan for his life. He's visionary. So he concentrates and you know he focuses on trying to do and achieve what he believes God has called him to do. Praise the Lord. That means two very important things. He must be psychologically balanced. Hallelujah. Spiritually balanced. Sometimes some people ask at what age is on should we get into a relationship plan for marriage and all that? You know what? The Bible says, for that a man shall live. And you know what? The responsibility of the man for his home or for in a relationship is not just that you are telling the lady, I love you and buying her sweets. Is that psychologically, sometimes she may go through things. You are able to bring balance to her life. Help her, guide her in a particular decision. That means if psychologically you are not sound, there's a problem. If mentally you are not fit, there's a problem. That means you must have some enough resources mentally. Hallelujah. To be able to help you make decisions. And you must have enough material resources. Praise the Lord. To take someone through that journey. Are we following? Hallelujah. Ladies, cardinal virtues. Very important virtues. Teachability. Please, guys, talk to the ladies. Tell them teachability. You know the fact? The truth is, some ladies, their mouth, can, they cannot close their mouth one bit. Keep quiet. Keep quiet and listen. I lie. She says, see, oh, this is not how they do it in my father's household. This is not. And you're in relationship with somebody, you tell the person, look, this is how... I know they do it in my house. See, teachability, your ability. It does not mean weakness. It means, you know, your ability to, you know, to learn. To be open. To learn which can improve you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Teachability. Very important. I remember some time ago, I think like around 2007 or so. <laughs> I think Apostle asked us to speak to some ladies and we were the ones he asked us to speak to them. Are you understanding? They were the ones that had a problem. But my God, she quoted, she was preaching Pastor Chris's message for me, preaching whether T.D. Jakes preached messages and I just sat down like this. I was listening while I... Do you know what? Honestly, in my mind... She didn't know, but in my mind I said, Kai, I will not, I cannot marry a lady like this. Let me tell you the truth, ladies. Most guys run away from ladies that are not teachable. I'm telling you. She talked all through the counseling session. At the end, I just said, okay, God bless you. Let's pray. I'm telling you. Because you know what? She didn't come to be helped. She was not ready to be taught. And if you're a lady and you see that that area of your life, your vocal power is strong, work on it. Work on it. Learn that, you know, the guy may not be, you know, he may not be, he may not be eloquent. But listen to me. Please listen to me. You must learn to what? Be open. Because in it you'll be surprised. Daddy said something here when he was talking. He said he's not 
he doesn't, he's not very outspoken. He doesn't talk much. His wife does most of the talking. But you know what? That marriage wouldn't have worked if she did not see that. And you know what? She adjusted to be teachable. Teachability doesn't mean you won't speak. But guess what? You know when to be silent and when to learn. Submission. Very in line with teachability. Submission. What does it mean? You see, there's a wave and a wave of madness that is hitting around and it's creeping into the church gradually. The feminist movement where women feel they are chauvinist, they feel they are equal to a man. They feel, look, look, man, you don't have anything. And you know what? So the woman feels if she enters her house, her husband should treat her like a colleague in office. Are you understanding? The lady feels in a relationship. I think some guys, they, a, a guy called me one time. He, he had a problem in his relationship and they broke up. Let me tell you what happened. The lady is a woman of God. She's a woman of prayer. And guess what? She flows in the prophetic very powerful. Words of knowledge, she can look and she will just diagnose and see. She will x-ray somebody's life and she will be telling. She was not intimidating the guy in the relationship. She will come. He said, God told me this. God. She was not submissive in any way. She felt the guy should buy into her vision. Her vision, she said, she, I'm called to oh, buy into my vision. Whether you're a teacher in Sunday school, buy into my vision. You know what? The ability to submit as a lady... You find this many times with ladies that are maybe a bit into ministry and if you do not learn to adjust, let me tell you the truth. This is why some ladies are so, you see they are so, they, they, they are so forward to a point that you know what, you don't see a guy ask them out. They are afraid to ask them out. Yeah, I've seen some ladies in some fellowships, guess what? The brothers are afraid. They are afraid to even approach them. You know the reason? Because... On her face, there's a frown. She's serious. There's no, there's no friendliness. She's too serious. For, so the guy is afraid. Then later in the sweet by and by, she finds out that the time is ticking. Time will be ticking. Hallelujah. But you know what? As a lady, honestly speaking, see, it's a virtue that if you can cultivate and work on submission, it's not foolishness submission the bible talks of it so much i know some ladies have watched we women like what's her name oprah winfrey yes i'll say it oprah winfrey abby such women teach other women very funny things funny doctrines and will make the woman treat the man and look you will, will not submit to you are you following what i'm saying you must learn submission hallelujah Submission is quite key and relevant. Praise the Lord. Then, ladies, one cardinal virtue we look out for still in a lady. I said it earlier, respect. Do you know what? Some ladies may not be... Sometimes you wonder, have you seen some men? The way he loves his wife and respects her, you wonder why. She's not pretending, she's not faking it. One of the ministers I love many times, I, I think some a few times when I go to Apostle's place and he gets to talk about it and show it. Paul Enenche, every time, every time Paul Enenche just holds the microphone to, the wife will stand. When he's talking about her, maybe he's commending his wife, you know what happened? She will stand. You will see, she's not pretending, you will see the honor, the respect. Ah. Some ladies will look and say, this is my, this my husband. What's there? It's my husband now. Are you understanding? But the respect, the respect she has for her husband. Let me tell you the truth. Most guys, there are ladies that you may not see anything very outstanding about them. Are you understanding? But there's a way they respect people that you find out that you don't understand why. But you know what? Is attractive. Let me tell you the truth. Respect is like a magnet. Respect is like a magnet. Let me tell you the truth. You're a lady and you can work on your respect value. 
that virtue in you, respect, you'll be stunned what it will do. Because by default and by design, most men are conscious of that. They want to be respected. I told you they see love like that. So when a lady does not respect, you do not have that value system. What you are trying to do is this. You are trying to say, I challenge anything that comes my way. So it's enough reason to just drive someone away. Hallelujah. Help me with that note, please. Sorry. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. Respect. Very, very important. Praise the Lord. Then, please ladies, be clean and be physically attractive. What does that mean? Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Now listen. A true life story. Okay, in Enugu. A sister had been trusting God for a life partner. She'd been praying. Praying and praying and praying and praying and praying and praying. And, praying. and guess what? God had been answering. Answering and answering and answering. Hallelujah. You know what happened? Her closest friends were women that had children. She would tie rapper, tie her ears. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, and she likes carrying their baby. It's not bad. <laughs> Praise God. She likes carrying their babies. So most of the brothers in church will see her. And you know what? They really thought she was married. So everybody was afraid to go near her. The reason because they felt, let me not go near what a married woman. Praise the Lord. And everybody kept avoiding her. She kept praying for, for a while, for some, I think two years. She was praying, praying and asking God for a life partner. A life partner, asking God. So she said one day the Holy Spirit spoke to her. I said, look at yourself in the mirror. <laughs> then she turned and looked at herself in the mirror. And guess what? She found out. She was tie wrapper. She was always she was looking like a woman that has had five children. She was dressing like her friends, the people she was keeping company with. Are we saying you don't keep company with people that might? No, that's not what we're saying. Are you following the point? You get the gist. But she was behaving like that. She was carrying children. So people in church were seeing her. The young men were seeing her carrying children. And they thought she was married. Always carrying children. Always carrying children. They thought she was married. What are we saying? Physically, hallelujah. Physically, you must be conscious of how your appearance is. Praise the Lord. Left for me, let me be honest with you. Some ladies will put red lipstick paint everything you will be so you look so scary some will think it's this japanese cartoon <laughs> hallelujah some will actually think it's this japanese cartoon and draw lines like this there's nothing wrong in putting on makeup are you following but physically because you must be you must understand that most guys are moved by what sight are you following so what they see physically is important are you following what we're saying what they see physically is important so how you present yourself is important. We're not saying you should be nude. Like Daddy earlier said, you get, you'll be nude and think by exposing yourself that that's not what would drive a lot of people. Let me be honest. It may work for some of those people around that are not serious with God, but let me tell you the truth. If you really want a godly life, you must behave as a godly person. Guys desire what? They are moved by sight. But they do not live by sight. A godly man does not live by sight. Are you following? Why? Because what he sees. Because in a relationship, you will be physically attracted to the person. Are you following what I'm saying? You will be physically attracted. Adam saw Eve. And you know what he did? He said, Woo! <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, Woo! Then he remembered to add man. Praise God. So he was physically attracted to something. Let me show you something. You feel like clapping, please go ahead and clap. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Now let me show you some things, okay? I know we've said some of these things and... 
We've said some of these things. All these things are just in a bit to help us. Now, let me tell you something. We said something. The physical container is important. Are you following what I'm saying? Both the man and the female. Why? Because you know what? You are attracted to a person. But now, let me tell you the truth. That is not what informs your judgment. Let me show you a scripture. Genesis. Genesis 2.23 Genesis 2.23 Help me. Genesis 2.23 Please take note of that scripture. Genesis 2.23 Okay, let me just quickly read it. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Hallelujah. This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. Now let me tell you something quickly. I know many times, please don't just choose somebody or get into a relationship. Just the physical, just because of what? The container. Somebody said something, marrying a beautiful woman just because of her beauty is like buying a house just because of the external paint. Do you understand? Because you must be conscious of some of the things. What? This is why, it, lady, you must work on what? Your internal virtues. Guys, you must be conscious of her spiritual, her spiritual deposits. Are you following? Her virtues. Your virtues are powerful because beauty can fade. Beauty can fade. I asked a guy one day, I said, oh God, I said, if something happens to that fine face of that girl, what will you do? Are you understanding? Because what will strengthen and make your relationship go far? Even when in future the woman gets old the man gets old you know what the things that will strengthen that relationship is what are the things that bound you guys that you do not see but you know of are you following the intern the virtues within because those virtues cannot be replaced are you following what i'm saying they cannot be replaced by external beauty are we saying the physical beauty is not important it is but notice what adam said he said this is now bone of my bone the first revelation was he saw something inside are you understanding? This is now bone of my bone. First, he didn't say flesh of my flesh. He said bone of my bone. He saw the internal first. The internal attracted him first before the external. Are you following? For some people's case, their own is this is now flesh of my flesh, then bone of my bone. Are you understanding? But you must see the first thing that you should see is what? The internal. Then the external follows. Hallelujah. Quickly before we pray. With all these things I've said. Please do not negate the place of prayer. You must pray. The Bible says a prudent wife comes from what? A prudent wife. It's good we prepare. It's good we plan. It's good we have some of these things. But let me tell you the truth. See, all these things will rest. They will rest on what? Prayer. Are you following? You must pray. You don't just jump into a relationship. You pray. You pray about it. You'll be led. Now, is it possible for God to show you a vision? Yes. Is it possible for God to show you in a dream? Yes. But the most important thing, is it possible for God to speak to you directly in your ears? There are different ways God, God speaks. The, one of the first things you should settle is how God speaks to you. You must learn how God speaks to you. Sometimes some people wait. They don't hear God in anything. It's when they want to get into a relationship. They now go and they shake the gates of heaven. God, speak, God, speak, God, speak, God, speak. And you've been thinking about the guy so much. Or you've been thinking about the lady so much. And you know what you see? You see the guy wearing a suit, black suit. And you see yourself wearing a wedding gown. I say, wow, that's God speaking. That's my husband. You've thought so much about the person. Praise God. So you must work on that. Why? Because, yes, I believe in visions and all that. But let me tell you the truth. One of the most profound things you must follow is your conviction. The Bible says many daughters have done well, but thou, thou, excel them all. That means, will you see many ladies that are beautiful, more beautiful than lady you are going out with? Yes. Will you see some guys that are more, maybe handsome, more attractive? In, yes. But let me tell you the truth. It's your conviction that will make it. This is why I said, there's something about that person that goes beyond all that. It goes beyond any logical argument. You know this is the person you are supposed to marry. And you stick with the person. I had a friend back then, University of Justice, he was a pastor. He dreamt, or no, there was one that dreamt. Another one had a vision, saw the lady and said, Wow, this is the lady. In fact, somebody came and confirmed it with the prophetic word. 
But let me tell you the truth. That guy got into five other relationships. Yeah. Five other relationships. In my mind, I say, was it not God that spoke the first time? Because, you know, not paying attention to some of these very important things and especially hearing God and be sure and be convinced from God before you move has caused a lot of people to enter and break out. Some, you must be serious with your life. Guys, ladies, there's no point. I made up my mind that I don't have an intention to just break the hearts of many sisters. Leave a trail. Some people have a track record of their broken hearts they've left behind them. Break this person's heart. Run. Enter here again. Break this person's heart. I don't just know. You must be focused. Please, you must be focused. You must be sure. There's no point asking a lady out if you are not sure. What's the point? It's not, see, it's not games. Because you know what? There are some things God does not just smile about. A lady is making a judicious progress in her work with God. And simply because you like the way she prays in tongues, you just feel you should go and ask her out. Are you understanding? Then you ask her out and you find out you are not interested again. Then you break her heart. And for her to recover may take her like three months. Sometimes some even take them a year. Same thing with the lady. Please, our relationship is an important aspect of our work with God. It's very important. You know why? Because relationships have made some people, their spiritual life to decline. So this is why we said something. We said you must be prepared. Spiritually, you must be conscious. As a man, that you know, you are taking a woman through a journey. That means you must build her up spiritually. You must be ready to build her up spiritually. Hallelujah. It's not just a rosy ride to just carry her and take her to Mr. Biggs. It's beyond that. Because after Mr. Biggs, one day you will have children. And in the relationship, if you don't start praying, don't start building yourself... What kind of... You will not always keep going to Mr. Biggs when you marry. It tells you that, you know, there's a spiritual link in the relationship. Your prayer lives. You must have time to pray together. You must have time to study the word together. So if the guy is not serious, when you're talking to a guy and say, let's go to church, or you're trying to... And you know, the guy is not even making effort. It tells you that, you know, there's an issue. Hallelujah. Praise God. Because our understanding of love, our understanding of relationship must be the way God designed it to be. That relationship have what for what? For matured people. When I mean matured, I'm not talking about age. I'm not talking about white hair. Because many men with white hair have misbehaved. Many ladies with white hair have misbehaved. Our hair being gray doesn't mean no. We're talking about what? That spiritually, mentally, you've attained a level where you're not, you can conduct or carry a wife. Hallelujah. And you should know this simply because you know what? We should know this and prepare her so that you know that if you're entering a relationship, you are planning that God, I'm not just playing a game. I'm planning that this is where I trust God. That it should end in marriage. I'm not saying if you find out that you're in a wrong relationship, you shouldn't break. But I'm saying that first, before you get into the wrong relationship, you must plan. This is why we read the scripture in Luke. You must count the cost from your own end. Because relationship involves, I told you, ladies see relationship as what? They see it as time. It involves money, precious saints. You will call. MTN will not dash you credit. Bishop Stan. MTN will not, I'm telling you, I know they do bonus weekends. You are wondering how I know. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Are you following what we're saying? Please listen. Because you know, it will involve you loading your phone, sending text messages, and you know, it will involve you taking her out once in a while. Some brothers are, you are so spiritual that the only thing you do, you just drag her. The only place you take her out to is the prayer ground. Or God, that kind of relationship needs adjustment. Tonight you need to adjust it if you are one like that. Are we saying you don't pray? No, you pray. But guess what? Once in a while, you take her out. And if you take her out, you are not going to go and smile. And tell the guy, you know this is the girl I love. <laughs> so give us hamburger. And I'm telling you, when you finish smiling, the guy will look at you and say, 
Sorry. Or you come and wash plates. If you don't pay me. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, precious saints, it involves truly, to be honest with you, just going through some of the things we've said already, it involves time, money. Praise God. Time, money. Very important, financially. So, the guy, the lady that wants to get into a relationship, you begin to first see. You pray. Then you know what? Is the guy a godly person? Is the lady a godly person? When I mean godly, are they born again? You don't get yourself equally yoked with an unbeliever. When that is in place, then you check out the honesty of the man. Hallelujah. You check out his sincerity, his, his vision and his purpose. Praise God. You find out his spiritual stability. You find out the love he has for God because he must be passionate and he must love God. Please don't just go near a man that is not serious with God. He must be passionate. He mustn't be a pastor. This is the balance some people need to have. Some ladies are waiting and say, this guy must be, he must be like Prophet Jangfa. If he's not like Prophet Jangfa, I'm not married. He has to hold the microphone and be prophesying. Let me tell you the truth. He may not be a ministry, when I mean ministry, five-fold minister as it were. But guess what? The most important thing is this. If he loves God and is born again and is fiery, fiery for God, he's on fire for God, then precious things, you know what? Then there's something there. Hallelujah. And for the ladies, you know what? That she's virtuous, she's teachable, she's humble, she listens. Are you understanding? She loves God. She loves God. Okay? When some of these things are in place, then you know what? You really pray. You pray and you find out. Because it's possible to meet many brothers that have some of these qualities. Is that true? It's possible to find many sisters that have some of these qualities. Pastor Alpha, right? Amen. Praise God. But you know what? Something will precede that. That means, you know what? You pray. Your prayers is what helps you know if this is the person. Are you following? You pray. And I said you don't just start praying when you are in the relationship. When you are planning to marry, the girl has entered your heart or the man has entered you are the person you've been dreaming about. You will see that person in your vision. But you know, you have prayed and prepared yourself and know that this is the direction God wants you to go. Hallelujah. Now, please listen. As we said earlier, I'm, I'll still emphasize this point before we pray. Please create boundaries in your relationship. Please, I beg you. Create boundaries in your relationship. Then don't forget the place of counsel. The place of counsel in a relationship is important. You know what that means? Before I got into a relationship, Apostle, no, I, I, met, I met Apostle. I spoke to him of my intentions. I spoke to my brothers. I spoke to them. I know it. Before I moved and asked the lady out. But you know the problem with some people? There are many guys here. You don't seek counsel from anybody. You feel, you know, you know you're in love. Love is shocking you. And Jimmy says something that I like very well. He said, love is blind, but marriage will open your eyes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Because, you know, some, sometimes some people just say, I'm in love, and you know what? They don't seek counsel. You've asked many ladies out, and all the ladies you've asked out have refused. Sometimes you didn't ask for counsel, because if you had asked for counsel, you meet your friends. What does that mean? It means, you know what? Have godly people that will pray with you. And you know what? They will help you. They will help you. Are you following? I met them, and you know what? I told them, I said, my heart is tilting towards this direction. And they encouraged me, they spoke, and you see, they were able to tell you, People will counsel you and tell you, okay, I know this person. Pray about it. Have you prayed about it? Ask you questions. But not so for some people. You just take up, you take off in the heat of the anointing. That anointing of love. And you go and you hit your head on the wall. Bah! And you come back with wounds and scratches. Hallelujah. The reason is because many of us do not pay attention. We, know, we do not seek counsel. The place of counsel, you don't abuse the place of counsel. No matter how. You may be a professional. You may have read many love novels. Let me tell you the truth. You don't play with the place of counsel. Because some of these things we've been saying tonight, precious people, 
Let me tell you the truth. If you don't pay attention to some little things, you'll find out that you'll replace some events in this life. There are ministers of God that beat their wife. Jimmy was telling me of one, one time, that he's a pastor. And that early in the morning, you hear the man praying in tongues. And the next thing you hear, you hear the man slap his wife. Yes. Slap his wife and you continue praying to him. Like, yeah. Praise God. But you know what? There were things in that man's life he did not deal with. Let me be honest with you. If we do not deal with some issues in our life, our characters, if we do not expand our hearts to receive some things, we may find out that we will replace some of those events. Praise the Lord. You must balance these things. Can we rise to our feet? There are things I want us to pray for tonight. There are things I want us to pray. You know the, the things some of us need to work on? Our words. Our words. It's not so hard for your mouth to open and you say, you hiss, or you speak. The Bible says, soft, a soft answer turns away wrath. Words. Some people's relationship has suffered and is suffering. The reason is because of words. Words. Hurtful words. You can be so pained in a relationship, I know it. The next thing you know, you say something to hurt that person. Why? Because you know, the person made you angry. And, and you may not be in a relationship, but guess what? Your words are not a define at all. Your words are not vicious. Every time you open your mouth, when you speak, it's like, it's, it's like, like they are poisons, like arrows. And you like it. Let me tell you the truth. If you marry, you may speak, or if you're in a relationship, you may speak hurtful words to the lady. And you're excited. You know why? She will cry. Then she'll be begging you, don't be angry now. But we need to pray tonight. Because some people are already projecting themselves. They know they have that mouth. Their words are poisonous. They say you are stupid and they cut the phone. Yes, believe us. It may not be strong words like this, but you know, the mouth, your mouth, your words do not edify. Your words do not edify. You speak even with your normal female friends. How much more when you get to a relationship? We must pray tonight. The first prayer point we are going to pray and ask God. Like never before. God help us culture our words. The Bible says let your words minister grace. Let it minister grace. Our words. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Rante kapora se kapala raba baba baba. Iparonde koto parate le bosha. Rindo poko to parite pandoha. Zipreton la branda raga dose. Liparakata la branda baraba daba la braga de. Rekete le boko shuparaga la braga daba da. Liparabanda pakadosa kaparaba da. Indo parita bonda karaba dose. Ila paraka baka shambaraba dose. Reto pada bala bara pada namanda raga dose ila pala bonde pala raba daba kaba shapa raba dos iporodo si baranda li pega de bose lika pala raba shamba raba dos inta porende kale bosa ola si bala naga bando ko suparaga de Hallelujah. I want us to pray tonight and we are going to be asking God, Lord, like never before, to help us redefine love. It's not what we've watched in some films or, in, or for some that have read Mills and Bones. You know why? Because the whites that wrote about the love, most of those Westerners, they have more broken marriages. They have a high level of divorce. It tells you that they do not really understand what love is. Let me tell you, you cannot love properly in your relationship if agape does not flow strongly in you. If you've not caught the love of the Father strong in your heart and the love of God is not expressive in your life, 
you may not know how to love your spouse. You may not know how to love when you're in a relationship. Because you may feel the person is not giving you back. And you feel bad. She's not returning back. But you know what? That the love of God will expand in you and prepare you for a fruitful and lasting relationship. I want us to pray. Ask God like never before God. You will teach me love. The Bible says you yourself have been taught of God to love. You've been taught of God to love. Lord, teach us to love. Teach us to love. Ria faton jatretonde. Rato pati katali rapatonda karabadosa. Likata le bon jaberretosi kapaledose. Linda parida sombra kato. Ilaka basha parada dosa. Lenta karabade le bose. Zipratoshi pradose. Randa katele bose. Rate kaparabados. Ilamanta kalabaroshe kele bababa. Rendo kosi parade bose. Parido ka bonji verida bando. Ila tapali rason za paragadeste. Bofa fila tanda kalabosi. Brete deli bando ramete li adose. Vakata gabashi karabanana mando. Rate ketele bose. Manja parando kosi karabalababa. Oh, Zepele Manda la Barabasa Barabada Balabana. Hallelujah. Just before we round off, I still want us to pray and ask God. What's God for patience? Patience and self control. Patience and self control. Patience and self control. Lack of patience has been the reason why some people slapped somebody in a relationship. Why a father beats his wife. Lack of patience. Lack of patience and self-control. Just that patience. Patience. Some have carried hot food and thrown on other people. But let me tell you the truth. Until we ask God for patience in our lives. Patience. Can we ask the Lord for patience? Ask the Lord like Lord like never before. Grant us patience. Teach us patience. Teach us patience. Patience. Some have entered the wrong relationship. The reason is this. They were not patient. Pressure. They were not patient. Pressure. They were not patient. Barate kabonde parada rabakonda si parababa. Lord, we pray. In the name of Jesus. Now, I want to pray for some set of people. Two sets of people. The first set, you are finding is you've entered relationships. They've hurt you so bad that already in your mind, Satan has programmed it and you feel, you doubt if you can ever find somebody that will not hurt you again. A good relationship in this life. You are so hurt that it's paining you. You don't really believe it may even be a Christian that hurt you so much. You don't really believe this person. You can find somebody in church. Brothers, you can find honest brothers. And in your mind, somehow, you feel anybody that comes, call you, just accept. Please, I want you to lift up your hands and we'll pray with you. Hallelujah. Just lift up your hands. God bless you. The next set of people I'm going to be praying for. The next set of people I'm going to be praying for are people that you are trusting God for grace. There are things happening in your relationship. I won't ask you to come out. Already there are lines you've crossed. 
But you're asking God tonight that God, you grant us grace. You grant me grace to put those barriers and stay with those barriers. That tonight, God, you grant me grace. You've crossed barriers. I'm telling you. You've crossed and you know, you feel bad. But your relationship, you find out that this thing has entered your relationship. And from tonight and hearing some of the things we've said, you know that this thing is getting out of hand. And except the Lord helps you, you're afraid of where it may lead you to. We'll pray for you. Don't worry, I will ask you to come out. Okay? I will ask you to come out. But please, let's just pray. Hallelujah. Just pray and ask God whatever your challenge is. I mentioned it. Just go ahead and pray. Just go ahead and pray. Please go ahead and pray and ask God for grace. Those of you with this particular challenge I'm talking about, you are trying to stop. You are trying to stop. It's difficult. You are trying to stop. You can't even start a godly relationship without, I told you the number one core value is that you have a relationship with God. You are not born again. You can't love. You are not born again. You can't even be in a good relationship in the first place. Because you know, you don't have the Holy Spirit in you to help you live that godly life. Or you had walked with God before. But you found yourself derailed. Tonight I give you an opportunity. Just quickly walk up to the front. You want to recommit yourself to Jesus Christ. Or you are not born again. And you want to ask God that God please help me. For without you I know I can do nothing. For without you I can do nothing. Make your way to the front. Quickly make your way to the front. Hallelujah. We're waiting for you. Just make your way to the front. Alright. Thank God for everybody being born again. Just lift up your hands and just give God praise for tonight. And ask God to grant you grace to be committed to the things you've heard. Thank you for watching our entire video today. If you feel you can bless someone, please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media.